Well, oh god, that cut. <laughs> the audio cut really doesn't sound that good. I've got my headphones on today, so I'm hearing it very clearly. Uh, hello everybody, welcome, welcome. Day six. Day six! Uh, where has the time gone? I suppose it's because two of the parts were, you know, kind of laggy and we didn't really make much progress. Um, but yeah, welcome, welcome. I hope we're all good. I just kicked a bucket of old aquarium water. Like, all over the floor, which was not fun and had to clean up. Because um, <clears throat> I'm lazy and an idiot. And before I went to bed, I sorted some stuff out. And I said, I'll just leave that there. You'll know it's there. Tomorrow morning, sort it out. And, uh, no, I, I did not. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I hope you guys are all doing good. <clears throat> uh, today, we're going to be uh, assaulting the Wizard's Tower. And um, actually visiting the place. That's a minor spoiler, I guess. <clears throat> But not too major, really. I mean, we could all assume that we were going to be going to the tower. I'm starting here in the Black Citadel because I just bought my Provisioner's Tokens for the day. And just as a reminder to everyone, Provisioner's Tokens are very likely a part of Obsidian Armor. They are essentially daily gated. If you choose to try and get around... I mean, there is a daily gate, full stop. But if you try to get around it with, like, cash, it's a lot of money. So the best thing you can do is just slowly buy these. And here at the Black Citadel, there is one for an Obsidian Shard. Which, as I just ranted about in the previous part, are uh, in ultra abundance. So just come to this guy next to the, the waypoint at the entrance to Diessa, right? So you're in the Black Citadel. You're not actually in Diessa. You're in the Black Citadel, and he's right next to it. You can get one a day for that, which is essentially free. You just have to remember to. I have 126. This is not from doing raid CMs or anything. This is just buying every day. Not 126 days for what it's worth, because I also then go to Lion's Arch. <clears throat> And I usually get um, two from this guy in the sort of central town area, the Cor Commodore's Quarter. Uh, I usually get, there's one for a Mystic Forge Stone, which maybe you have a stockpile of, maybe you don't. Kind of depends on the sort of player you are and, you know, what you've been doing. Um, and then there's one for five Ecto. This one for five Ecto is actually fairly pricey, I think. And it's kind of getting closer to the amount you might expect to spend you know, the other vendors. <clears throat> but it's just convenient for me. I nearly always have Ecto and I just buy this. Today I only have four Ecto. And the reason for that is because <laughs> I got my hairstyle contract yesterday. Um, and, uh, sorry, two days ago. And yesterday, no, yeah, yes, no, two days ago. And then yesterday, after the stream yesterday, I, um, I bought some more keys. I basically sold a ton of stuff. I sold all my Mystic Coins. I sold all my glories of battle thing from all my world versus world all my um shards of glory from pvp got as much money as i could converted to gems because i had like 400 gems left over and they're currently on sale so it was like 1300 um and i bought keys and that meant i sold all my ecto yesterday for keys i didn't really get anything special but i did get some more wardrobe unlocker stuff which was nice um i'm gonna stop previewing these in a video soon but yeah, it didn't really dig through it very much, but <clears throat> made a bit of progress. Anyway, so yeah, uh, let's head over. Now, I've checked the meta event. Let's head over to the Hall of the Maguma. Let's go to Drogna's Forge. Now, we have this little story instance, which we're going to jump into straight away. And um, what I'll do is I will... I think we just play... I can't remember what happens in this instance, but I think we just play the instance, and the meta triggers in about half an hour. Or it was half an hour when I last looked. 25 minutes now, okay? So everything should line up pretty well in terms of timing here. Um, <clears throat> for us to uh, just get in, do the assault. I will squad up. I won't right now because we're going to go into this instance. But I will squad up and I will see um, uh, whether we can fill the map out with you guys and we can actually play. Uh, so yeah, it should be good. Number five, the missing facet. Uh, we don't really have much of a recap, do we? I guess technically we've done t two story steps now since we last read this. Which is interesting. Hello, Kairos. It's good to see you, man. Um, I hope you're having a good day. I hope anyone who manages to catch this live is having a good day. Oh, yeah. And so also, by the way, you see the icons. Um, I had... So on my initial playthrough of this expansion, um, you know, if we go to Story Journal, Secrets of the Obscure Act 1, there's all these achievements here, right? These, I, I didn't really put any effort or energy into. I just got playing through. On my first playthrough, before I started shooting these videos. Um, so, yes, you're not seeing these. But these kind of all just happened, you know. Um, 
you know, befriend a Massar was automatic. These all just kind of happen. Yeah, and uh, like read the notes. There were two notes in this instance, for example, while we were following Zoja, and we read them both in the series. So you have seen all the content. You just didn't see the dings. These happen for free. Also, I'm not going to click it because of spoilers, I guess, or whatever. But for Act Three, I also for free got all these story achievements. Um, Act Two, though, which is where we now are, we've technically been on Act Two since the last story step. I don't have all of them, and in fact, one of these upcoming missions has got a choice, go left or right, and I need to go left. The achievements, there's actually pretty good incentive for doing these, you get the new relics from them, and one of the relics in Act 2, the Act 2 relic is like the most overpowered one in the entire expansion. Um, so, uh, I'm looking forward to getting that, basically on my previous playthrough I went left, this time we'll go right. And uh, we should have that done as well. Uh, there is, for what it's worth, also kind of this discussion of, like, well, how much content is in the expect? And so when we say Se Secrets of the Obscure Act 1, this is, in terms of story achievements, this is what they put in. If we go End of Dragons Act 1, you can see there's substantively more. And, in fact, even to this day, three of them I haven't finished. Um, if we go to Path of Fire Act 1, there were substantively more. If we go to Heart of Thorns Act 1, there were substantively more. So, I mean, but we are aware of this being a mini expansion, so to speak. You know, I think this is a pretty specific, petty little thing to talk about, maybe, in terms of content depth, d um, quantity. But there you have it. Um, so, here we go, the missing facet. You might say, you know, this is a mini expect, so it doesn't get a fourth act. The, the previous act should at least be rich with achievements. But, you know, maybe they compensate for that in the open world, whatever. All right, speak to the wizards. And I do got to get a move, I do want to get a move on here, just in case. Um we end up missing the meta, which would not be fun. Uh, yeah, I really don't remember this. This is nice with all the ambient creatures wandering around. Too dry. I, I, I can't feel anything at all. The last glimpse was of cryptus. A whole horde of them. Very subtle here. Air Park whispered us dot dot dot. Until circumstances point otherwise. So Air Park is listening to this, basically, right? With that dot dot dot. It's annoying his whispers don't appear under my NPC filter. I feel like they should, you know. Anyway, Leah said, my stain's too dry, I can't feel anything at all. The last glimpse was of Cryptus, a whole horde of them. So his other facet, just to be clear, his other facet has gone hidden in the Wizard's Tower. Let's quickly read these. That's what I was going to do. I just distracted myself. Um, Mother of Stars, without hesitation, my new friends in the Astral Ward put me to work in this strange millennia-spanning war against the Cryptus. I'm still adjusting to this revelation of uh, to the revelation of this information, just as I'm fighting the urge to call in a fleet of airships and get the whole ordeal resolved. Someone in my comments was like, this is really weird, this thing about the commander mentioning the airships. Because that was a disaster when we flew against Maguma. <clears throat> and that was our only experience, really, of flying a fleet of airships somewhere. But I don't know whether that's necessarily true. You know, maybe some of the events around Corner or the end of Season 3 when we were flying away on a fleet of airships. Um... I mean, it wasn't our fleet of airships at the start of End of Dragons. I mean, maybe you've got a point. Maybe our one experience of that went badly. But, you know, it was Traherne sort of orchestrating that or whatever. I don't know. I feel like if I was Liss, I would think that. I think this is a nice touch that Liss is thinking about getting a fleet of airships in here. Because I hadn't considered that as a player, but once it, once the writers have laid it out for me, I'm like, oh, that makes perfect sense. And that's, you know, that's what I live and breathe for in stories. I really like those moments. So I quite like it. I get the idea that it might be a bad move, but I mean, it was only a bad move very specifically because of Morgamoth. It wasn't a bad move against Zaitan, after all, right? But I'm choosing to trust the ward, for now at least. Got a lot of new faith. Uh, I really like these insights into the commander's mind. They should keep writing story journals like this, because it makes the story a little bit richer, you know? Like, I didn't get a sense that Liss was being cunning in the actual spoken dialogue, and she was, you know, being wary and she might turn against these guys. But in the journal, we get that sense. And I think, I think it's really good. I think the devs should just embrace the fact that the commander is his own character, not just a blank slate for the player's roleplay, all right? It's clearly not that kind of game. So have fun with it, you know? And I think this, these are cool little observations. Got a new fa look, and by the way, and this is so hidden away, players can opt not to read it if they think it's tampering with their immersion or whatever, you know? <clears throat> Got a lot of new faces to track, and Zoja seems to, te uh, to tense in my presence. We haven't spoken since her injuries in Maguma. I didn't know she'd left the confines of Ratasum since returning there to heal, but I expect that she, uh, that'll be a heavy conversation. Plus, I, I suppose it might complicate things if Logan were to fly up with a bunch of Pact or Seraph. 
That's interesting. Yeah, I can't even remember. Is Has Logan stepped down as commander at this point? I really can't remember if he stepped down or not. Um, he has, right? He's totally stepped down. It's funny because this I've talked about this a lot. I talked about this plenty around the EOD area and actually around the Dragonstorm patches as well. There's so much going on with the Guild Wars story where it's assumed goodbyes happen off screen or conversations happen off screen. You know, between patches, we're kind of just expected to think that the commander's meant to be mingling with allies, you know? And it's only when we get explicit conf confirmation here that we haven't spoken to Zoja since all that time that we ever really hear otherwise. You know, before this was written, you could imagine maybe we had chatted and it just wasn't a mystery. You know, the devs might have gone in that direction. Especially for Asura characters, you know, who have a deeper bond with Zoja. Anyway, um... That's a nice thing as well that we're worried about bringing Logan into this, which I hope they leverage in the next patch in 60 days or whatever, which is very close, by the way, if you think about it. Um, everyone was busy dragging down Dagda and Isgarin, uh, the two other remaining wizards, the latter being the leader of this organization. So I met up with Frode at one of the Astral Ward's outposts to see how I could help. He informed me of one of their more hands-on divisions, the Rift Hunters, led by a man named Re Oh, so the Rift Hunters are just a division of the Astral Ward. They're not the entirety of the Astral Ward. Led by a man named Rian, they've been tasked with t uh, tracking down and opening cryptic risks, uh, rifts, why can't I read? to challenge the demons hiding inside while the rest of the Astral Ward searches for their missing. You know what this makes me think of? It makes me think of Oblivion, and you know that little bit of Elder Scrolls lore where, um, <clears throat> who is it, the Argonians? Like, during the Oblivion Crisis, all these Daedra are invading Nern, but in Black Marsh with the Argonians, they actually, they use the portals in reverse. They invaded Oblivion. <laughs> And uh, it's just such a cool piece of lore, and it's kind of like what these Rift Hunters are doing, you know? They're actually opening these portals and going in and aggressing. Another weirdly, maybe sinister side to this, I don't know. Led by a man named Rian, they've been tasked with tracking down and opening rifts to challenge the demons hiding inside while the rest of the Astral Ward searches for their missing. Rian, so that's what the other divisions do, search for their missing? Rian taught me how to use the Heart of the Obscure, the device that Zoja gave me in the battle prior, that we used to close the rifts at the Beacon of Ages. Apparently, it was crafted by a coden wizard named Waiting Sorrow, who has since left the Astral Ward on somewhat precarious terms, I hear. Where did we hear that? That was in a lore book, maybe? <clears throat> Whenever I channel the device's power, the strange waves of emotion seem to guide me forwards, though I can't easily describe why I feel a strong connection to it already. Frode also introduced me to one of his right-hand soldiers, a brassy Asura named Wayno, who assisted me in my training. She sent me to one of the ward's medical tents, where I was tested for possession. Spending any time in Nao seems to have aroused suspicion, and honestly, rightfully so. That voice in my head urged me to keep my mouth shut, and given her aid in helping me escape Ceres, I did. Nice to see the commander's justification here for being quiet. Whoever she is, the motivations of Pather escape me, but I'm just as much a stranger to the Astral Ward as I am her. So long as I don't start clawing my eyes out or speaking in tongues, I'll keep her under my helm, just as, as dangerous as that might turn out to be. After all, she's done nothing to harm me thus far, which further piques my curiosity as to her motives. My mind is still bronze, a bit bronze. <clears throat> um, after everything I've endured over the years, uh, and I should play the right hand. Maybe I can gather more intel on Sarah's and the Cryptus. This is long! Holy shit, we're on a timer, though. Um, okay, we're gonna not read that just yet. I do really want to, but I'm really scared of missing the matter. So we'll read that when we get to the Wizard's Tower, okay? Anyway, uh, the last thing we did... I don't know what Pather wants, but I'm fairly certain she doesn't want me dead. Otherwise, I wouldn't be alive to record my thoughts here. As the group was pre preparing to depart, Fro turned to Dagda to inquire about a distre distress call that she and Zoja responded to in my absence. Another Astral Ward member has been possessed, and the result was dire. Dagda had to confine him in a prison cell to isolate the threat, but not before he'd managed to stab himself in the thigh. Pather took the opportunity to remind me of my place in this world, a stranger in an unfamiliar place with few friends. Should I reveal my connection to Pather, Dagda, with whom I've already been on dicey terms, may cut me down before I have a chance to explain. There's no rationalizing my predicament with a task force solely dedicated to fighting a demonic enemy. Man, the story journal makes it feel like we're really doing something tense at the moment here, but... Then there's that extra scene we had where we kind of already confirmed we had the demon in our head. Anyway, so here's my bond. More time with the Massart. Look at this. A dwarf, a Jotun, classic Jotun, whatever we think of the design, you know, there's been a good amount of discussion about it. Um... <clears throat> And, uh, and a Massar. How cool is this? The ancient races right here. Oh, and we're hunting a seer. 
I'm starting to understand why you kept this a secret for so long. And there is more to come. We were just discussing the path forward, Dagda. The tower is confused. It doesn't know what's happening. It's sentient? Hmm. The magic that flows within has demonstrated some level of awareness. It reacts to danger. I always imagined it as an extension of his Garin himself. The tower calls to all of us, but it prefers Isgarin's voice in response. In his absence, it doesn't know what to do. Which is where we come in. Now, there are a few ways we can calm our feisty lump of bricks. <sighs> and I assume none of them are easy. So what's the plan? Lear and I will push toward the fractal of Drachnar's forge. You can either assist us, or you can help collect essences. Distilled magic and emotion. It's potent among the fractals. We're collecting emotion, essentially. We did something like that in Kantha. There was a demon in Chalmu's mine. Gang leader. Was that a cryptus? Correct. And your demon was likely a wanderer. Demons who do not affiliate with Epoch's little society. Cryptus or not, demons are drawn to emotion, like risen are drawn to blood. Oh, I love this comparison this back place to the... must be a banquet. Morbid, but yes. We'll need to calm things down here before we can approach the tower. I trust you'll choose the right direction. Yeah, this is why I don't remember this instance, because it was just a bit of discussion. It's good discussion, though. The Risen drawn to blood thing I like, because they're talking about the Risen and whatever. But really, shouldn't it be like the Risen are drawn to magic? But then if you make that comparison, you may as well just say Elder Dragon minions, and now it's not like a pointed thing. I don't know. I get the sense that was written because they were just trying to think zombies to blood, and then they thought, oh, but Tyrion zombies are Risen. Which isn't necessarily true, by the way. There can be zombies that aren't Risen. Anyway, um, yeah, a nice little tie to the Giala Delve stuff. I wonder if I was playing... Because the devs used to do this. They used to change the dialogue based on which story journal chapters you had done. So if I hadn't done the Giala Delve, which, you know, it's the ass end of End of Dragons. I don't know. Feels like it will be eminently skippable one day. If I hadn't done that, would Liss not say that? I don't actually think they need to keep following along with that practice at this point. They may as well just write the whole story as though the commander's done and everything. And the other thing that I wonder is, I haven't done the Silent Surf Fractal, which is another demon. Would Liss have mentioned that if she had done the Silent Surf Fractal? Of course, bringing that into the conversation would then be a little bit annoying because we're dealing with regular fractals and we're, we, you've got to try and not get them confused with these fractals or whatever. But yeah, okay, the big thing here is that the Wizard's Tower is sentient. And they're not calling it a beacon here, which is annoying. I want to hear its beacon name. Surely they wouldn't just call it the tower. Surely they would call it the beacon of whatever. You know. But so, the tower's confused, and Liz says it's sentient. It has some level of awareness, it reacts to danger. Now, you could just say, well, this is just to explain why it moved, and this part of the plot exists. That's why the tower moved, because it's sentient, and it just, you know, it's a little bit unwieldy. And that's why they created the fractal, to wonder what would happen about, like, maybe if it got destroyed, what would happen to Garenhoff and stuff. But it's, a, it's kind of a very specific thing for them to have done, right? And I wonder, guys, whether it's because, ultimately, they're going to show that the tower has emotion, and this somehow is manipulated by the demons or something, because, you know, or the Heart of the Obscure or something. I don't know. Like, it's just a weird thing to say that it's sentient. Also, I totally forgot about that detail until just now, literally a couple of minutes ago when they said that. Because I don't think this comes up again in the expansion. Um, so I don't know what they're doing there. I wonder what you guys think of that. Anyway, yeah, hello. Uh, hey, Rocker in chat. Um, finally a stream you're not at work for. Yeah, weekend, I guess. Uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, and Aaron here says, Hey, WP, do you think the invisible person in Lake Doric was spying on Logan is a part of the Astral Ward? I don't remember what you mean. What invisible person was spying on Logan? Lake Doric was the last time we heard about E... Um, and there's this whole big theory, is E. Epoch? Lots of people have been talking about that. Um, <clears throat> I don't know where I really sit on that right now. We'll play through more of the expansion and see. But yeah, and as well, what's cool about this is, remember, I think that the devs should have ended it with another dot 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 from Epoch at the end. 
Just as a subtle way of being like, look, Pather might be listening, Air Park is definitely listening to this. So, they've demonstrated that Air Park knows everything said here. What was said, that the tower is sentient? So maybe he got that information at this point? I don't know. Maybe I'm just way off base here and none of this actually matters. So let's go out into Skywatch. So, our goal now is to complete the meta. What? Pether? Ah, so it's weird that just now they could. Oh no, that's a fucking player. <laughs> that's a player. That's why I didn't appear in the NPC tab. <laughs> someone tricked me. Someone with the Epoch name. Hold on. The other day, someone said to me that they couldn't get the Epoch name. That's hilarious. You totally baited me there. Okay, so Epoch wasn't listening to that conversation. It might not be important that the Wizard's Tower attention. That's fantastic. I've got to be really careful about that. <laughs> He's going to do that again in the future. That's so good. Because I was going to say there, why has it gone back to being a strange voice when it says Epoch here? Right? I was like, what? Why? Um, and it's because that's just a player. That's fantastic. <laughs> It's funny as well, because when that happened, I was like, yeah, I had an issue with the information appearing in the wrong tab before, didn't I? I wonder if they did it to me on the previous part and I didn't catch it. Yeah. All right, well, there you go. Anyway, so look, um, I mean, it's the devs essentially do do it because immediately the demons start talking again after the scene now, just instead of before. That silent dot, dot, dot thing would have been so good. ArenaNet should have done that. that I, genuinely, that's so good. I was like, oh, that's a cool thing. It feels natural, you know. Okay, so look, we have two objectives here. One is to craft the key for the Wizard's Tower. That's the meta. The other is this optional thing, gather essence from hunts and events across the island. That's essentially saying, hey, um, do some events, have some fun, basically. Uh, oh, yeah, instead of joining his tag, I guess I'll tag up. So if you guys want to do the meta with me, I know it's kind of the middle of the day. I didn't announce the stream or anything anywhere. Someone else posted in Discord. Actually, guys, I was really trying. To, I was thinking I should start adding people in Discord. Because what I've noticed, right, usually, okay, on Discord, my thing is I very rarely, if ever, do at here anymore. For years, I haven't done at here. You know, and we got, we got a good Discord community there. Um, and the GMs will occasionally do it, but I just I always feel like it's going to annoy people. And then they'll be like, oh, why am I getting pinged? And then they'll either mute the server, so in which case it's irrelevant, or they'll just leave, which would also suck. So I've kind of been like, only do an at if it's really good or whatever. But the thing is, I haven't done anything I've considered really good enough for an at for ages. So and I, what I've noticed is almost every server I'm in, they're always pinging away. And it's just the culture is just, people just mute what they want to mute, you know? And you just, you just got to use the at system, just use it. I'm being an idiot. So today I was thinking, yeah, all right, I'll add people that I've gone live. People deserve to at least know when these are happening. But I couldn't find an easy way to share the link to the stream before the stream came out. Now, I know there is a way to do that. I just couldn't find it while I was setting up. And we're on this time for the mayor. So I was like, oh, fuck it, I won't do it. Um, but yeah, Mr. Modius has posted it there. I can see now. So at okay, so let's finish an event and see what happens here. Can there be any old event? Or do they have to be rift associated events? I guess we'll see. Yeah, and I'll put myself on LFG here as well. A bunch of you guys have joined already. But Seekers of the Obscure, Skywatch, Meta, with WP. No, I'm not going to say that. Uh, just Meta, and then I guess I'll figure out what my IP is. Slash IP. Dot four four, I think it is. Don't we take the last number for that? Oh, guys, I gotta say, there's a real big improvement to Guild Wars I've noticed at the moment. With the new Wizards Vault stuff, uh, okay, and strike missions, right? Um, essentially, they're copying Final Fantasy, which I assume also. This is weird. What is this? A starlight lantern. Oh, this is because we got map comp. So the lanterns are now. This is like the end of Dragon's Lantern system. It allows you to do map comp on the same character. Okay. There's the they're power. cool. There's a, a new model as well. That's not just a generic Jade Tech looking met lantern. That's sure, nice. Still. Yeah, okay, so um, the Final Fantasy thing, if you guys don't know, basically when a new expansion comes out, they they have like a currency, and it's like the end game currency that you earn for doing the, mo the latest content, okay? The latest end game content. And you get that currency, and that can you can slowly build towards your new gear or whatever. In Guild Wars, that would be your new skins. 
So for the last expansion, that would be the green strike currency, which you could only get from End of Dragon strike stuff. Now that Secrets of the Obscures come out, they've done what Final Fantasy does, which is they've the the End of Dragon stuff has rolled into the Ice Brood Saga stuff, and that's all blue now. And the the the, the new currency is just from End of Dragons. And essentially what's happening here, I mean, I can guarantee you, if I go to strike missions right now... Oh, it's... Uh, I said I can guarantee and it didn't happen. Guys, nearly any time I look at this strike mission thing, I mean, you wait till the evening comes. It's insane! There's so many people doing strike missions, and there's a proper culture for it, like, okay, let's do the strike dailies today. And you get one from Icefruit Saga, one from End of Dragons, one from Secrets of the Obscure. And, like, it, 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 it's working really well. The item infrastructure and so like there's certain things that I don't have from the end of dragons era Which now I can earn in ice Brood saga because the currencies have rolled together So I can do the fast five from the ice Brood saga and slowly work towards whatever skins combat tonics I never bought back in the day um, And I'm telling you it's really populated the I'm, a, I'm really surprised how much strikes are catching on just because this the content is still mediocre as fuck Let's be real the content is really weak, and we all know that the content's really weak for most strike missions. But the the actual systems, the actual setup they have for how the bosses are partitioned out, for how they're rewarded, for how the dailies work, that they the, the de arena net has nailed. And you can see the population's thriving. You can see the culture is starting to come in. And I'm just really, really happy to see it. So, um, and I've always said that. I've always said that strikes are good. The strikes are not a bad setup. And people have said, but strikes suck. No, no, no. It's just the bosses. It's just the mechanics. It's just how they did it. It's just the tuning. Strikes themselves are good. I've been saying that for years. And I feel like it's we're, we're starting to see that now. I will reiterate what I said yesterday. And that's that I do think... Um, there should be, like, a couple of fight remakes each x back. It should be two new strikes and two remakes, you know. But whatever. Maybe I'm just being super flippant about the viability of that. Uh, not maybe. I definitely am. But, you know. That's the dream. <clears throat> uh, yeah, sorry. I'm on EU at the moment. I've kind of been really bad for NA lately. Okay, here we go. we got one minute. This is the matter. Here we go. Until I'm rejoined... I don't really think I'm going to be able to control the forge well enough. I'm afraid we're running out of both time and options. We have to try. <sighs> you always manage to talk me into these things. Fine. Come to the forge and we'll lay out the plan. We could use your help as well, Commander. Okay, so remember when we read why they made the Drogner's Forge Fractal and why they got the Forge out of the past? It's because it was a Forge capable of creating this amazing thing that would be useful in a disaster. And I think when we all read that, we thought, oh, that means a weapon, right? Surely it's a weapon. Actually, no. What they want to forge with it is a key to the Wizard's Tower. If they ever lose control of it, if it ever shuts everyone out. Remember, we don't know who's in there. We're hoping it is Garen's in there. We know that Lahir's other split is in there. But how do we get in? Well, we want this key. And that's what the Forge is to create. And I like that. I like that it was for a key to the wizard tower. These, these guys on the mini raptors here. So, Lahir and Mabon are, are discussing how to forge a key to unlock the tower. A dozen more swords, four more suits of armor. You're getting sentimental in your old age, Mabon. Never thought probably I'd be making chamber pots and coal All shovels. right, Commander. We're going to need all There's the essence the we can gather. What Mabon channels won't be enough. We're targeting a specific essence here, so do whatever you can to invoke a sense of awe. Should be easy work for someone with your history. But don't dally too long, right? We can't keep this up forever. <clears throat> Are you ready? As I'll ever be. Yeah, um... <clears throat> By the way, Mabon here, I wanted, to, I desperately wanted to press F on him and get dialogue. There isn't any. But one of you guys mentioned in the comments I won't be able to channel for long. Um, that Zinn apparently. I don't know if Elric was a dwarf from Guild Wars on. Apparently, Zinn does have a lot more dialogue for me. Uh, but I have to go speak to him when he's not in an instance. So we Let's will try that. We will go for that. Also, okay, yeah, in the comments, someone says, um, Aaron says, I wish they made raids more accessible like strikes. Yes, look, 
there is the dream end game scenario is this i've been saying it for about three maybe four years now okay this is really what keep going commander just like that <laughs> that line man <laughs> um the dream for me i think that's it the forge is really starting to heat up now is they split the strike that's it I don't know how I'm going to be able to talk about anything if the dialogue's going on. Because the event's over now, we're going to get even more. finally pulled that off. And yet, it still isn't enough. I see our mistake now. We captured only one facet, but we need the whole spectrum. So we'll have to gather essence of every facet that leaked out from the tower. I'm sorry, Lear, but hey, I don't know don't if move I can my do quench it. Tank. Then you we'll really do it together. It's gonna be up to you to gather it, Commander. If you You'll don't have to scour these right islands now, for essence I'll of each facet. The ward will assist, death. of course. But yeah, we're entrusting this to cares. you. We'll stay here and try to keep it going as long as we can. I swear they used to have a thing where, you know how it was coming through our comms device? I swear they used to have a thing where when you got close enough it flipped back to the actual people. But hey, I like this guy as well, Elric here. Um, just chatting random shit while all this important stuff's going on. Uh, my G600 is broken here. Welcome to the Forge, Outsider. You can sit for a while, just don't fool with anything. Tell me about the history of the Forge. Forge has been here longer than anyone remembers. Has made a share of legends over the years, too. What's that look? What more? Ask a historian. I've got work to do. So, did the dwarves make it, or did the Astral Ward make it? Is it like the beacons? You know, they potentially predate a lot of other stuff. Can you tell me about yourself? Ha! Everything important about me is in front of you already. Doesn't matter where I came from or where I've been. All that matters is what I make. I almost feel like, why are you giving me this option if you <laughs> you have no idea there? Unless he is, I can wiki him and there is some good history to him. Alright, what have we got? He's going to attempt to forge a key in seven minutes. Oh yeah, this is the bit where we go to all the different islands. And we accept the Shattered Atoll, I guess. And obviously Jock's Forge. And, um, so which one do we want to pick? I guess I'll go to one with not many people. We're at Anovis looks fairly empty. But we spent a lot of time there. Let's go back to POF. Also looks fairly empty. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I can talk about this strike thing. The sooner we get this essence, not. the sooner I can get back to fighting the cryptids. Somewhere cooler, ideally. There's no shortage of despair around here, that's for sure. So get to work. Um. Oh, that's weird. The gravestone's unmarked, but has a shield leaning against it. Oh, this is like the Beacon's Perch situation. Uh, but the Pike and Square, sorry. Beacon's Perch. So I need to find a sword to put on that. It's marked as though it's a part of this event. Accelerating. What is it? This is just an orb. That's so weird. It's can you see it's doing the old vanilla thing where if you look closely it's You're popping a vendor dialogue. Hopefully I'll get it's like listing my karma there on screen. One of these days. Whatever, I'm just gonna kill these guys. It seems to make more sense to just fight things. Yeah, okay, the Raid dream endgame scenario is this. They split the raids into individual islands. Each boss can be its own individual island, and they all become strikes. They all go into that strike infrastructure. You know, I shouldn't have to go through a bunch of BS if I want to fight Zera, for example, right? You know, because I don't like Escort, because I don't like this, because I don't like that. All of them could be individual things. And once all the raids are represented as strikes, just call strikes raids now. Just just call it raids so the outsiders understand what it is. And you just have one system and you queue in for individual bosses. Then there's the matter of, well, what about the linear experience where we go through all the bosses? That could be the story mode that people have been asking for for ages. And I've resisted in the past in terms of, like, they clearly don't have the resources to, to support the game mode anyway. And you definitely don't want to split the population. But at this point... Especially when we're off in the future with a lot of those old wings that people have experienced anyway You can make them as linear experiences and filter them into the story journal So everyone experiences them and they get full bang for their buck and you can teach a couple of the mechanics while you're at it That's the dream as far as strikes are concerned and there's a similar stream dream as far as fractals and dungeons are concerned Where I believe that there should be eight new fractals each the dungeons You'll mention my contributions to Mabon, right? So, in a similar way, you split the dungeons into fractals, and then once they're all in, you just call fractals dungeons from now on. That's just your dungeon system. That's what dungeons are in Guild Wars. They just have this weird island mist sort of theme to them. And, um, and the original dungeons can go in the story journal, where they would be really well suited for personal story. And there you go. That's a coherent game working. there. That makes a lot of sense. The worst. 
worst is yet to come. Forging the key is going to pull a lot from you. There are dangers that come with that. Ah, I've survived worse. It's gotta be done, Maban. So we might as well get to it. Okay, so we go back to the forge. And we forge our key. Sorry, it kind of sucks me trying to have a completely separate conversation while we're trying to follow the law of the meta, but let's be real, this is all fairly generic filler dialogue right now. We're just worried the plan won't work. And yet, this meta fails on the regular. I don't know what, what it is that's causing it to. But I have been a part of it once where it succeeded and once where it failed. So... Funny, we get static charges now instead of unbound magic. I'll get it back to you in one piece. I've learned that lesson already. So he's broken the forge before. Watch out now, everybody, because there's really no telling what might come flying off this thing. Just focus on the forge, and we'll deal with the consequences. So the forge is firing off like these enemy coalescences obviously but when you break them they have like there's Rain essences of different maximum. emotions despair anxiety joy i mean maybe they're not all judgments what are they judgment isn't an emotion is it it's sort of a, a, a way of being at least but yeah um and the game is when you pick these up you're filling the bars up we can't afford to lose this much Essentially, think of all these bars as draining. The forge is losing its power and vomiting it out everywhere. And by picking these up, I'm returning the power. So red at the moment is filled. And I was just collecting red ones. Well, we don't want that. Who's struggling? Orange is struggling. So we want to go at orange's anxiety. But also, the orbs themselves are color-coded to the color of the bar, which is really great. I love it when they use special what colors on these bars here, by the way. This? It's always a treat. <laughs> a caravan in the snow. Fire. And blood. I wonder what he's talking about here, the caravan in the snow, fire and blood. I've never seen this bit fail, by the way, but this is quite nice because this is kind of teaching us what's coming up uh, in the other bit of the map, which can fail. I think, anyway. This mechanic is, comes back, basically. I'm not, I'm not like some expert on this meta, by the way, again, because I've only seen it twice. So I'm kind of trying to figure out as I go along as I play this with you here. Now red is suffering. We all zerged away, it seems. Do you know a skill that I think would be really cool for Catalyst? And I keep using, especially in open world. That face. We have to break combat. Why do I know his face? Who's he seeing? The shadows under his eyes. Forget his face, Maban. Focus. We need you here in this moment. What is he talking about? What is this law? Could it be? Who's Rand again? I recognise the name. Why did it? Was he forced to forget about Rand? Because he's demon associated or something? Anyway, it's Arcane Brilliance. We need to neutralise them. I've actually tried this in PvP as well. There's some changes going on with the balance at the moment where they're removing trait, trait cooldown interactions. So previously you would have to trait to lower the cooldown of Arcane Brilliance. That's just now baseline. So basically, this got buffed, but it was like a sneaky buff. It was a, it was like a system a buff because of a system change they're making and possibly not fully analyzed. What do you mean? So, but why would he? I see it now. An empty a promise. In the, earth. the illusion of a choice. It was your choice. You did it because you believed in it, and you still believe in it. Push them out, and you can do this. We can do this together. I guess there he's referring to the moment he met Mabon, which is quite cool. I'm going to turn combat effects down. They're already incredibly low, but I think they should be lower. And probably music as well. I'm not vibing with the combat music in this. I think it's because I'm hearing it too much. Anyway, 11 seconds. I'll, I'll continue my rant about Arcane Brilliance in a bit. 
Let's just enjoy the meta story for a second here. So we go, the key is forged in one, zero. That's it. The key is as strong as we can make it. Quickly, we need to open the tower now. There's no telling what the cryptists will do if they gain full control of it. Did well, friend. Now let's get back home. This place was my home before you fooled me into leaving it. What other tricks have you played on me? On everyone? No more of your lies. I will fix this on my own. See, so one of the the, the I, facet that was free. I have to go after him. He, he didn't mean what he. Let me handle this. We can still get him back. So we got the key, but he's Cryptus possessed now. His other facet. So now potentially both of his facets are Cryptus possessed. So he's got the key and he's ran off. We got to go get it off him. Lear and he's in stasis now, but the situation is dire. Forging the key made him vulnerable to a deep corruption, and it's wound its tendrils around him. I'll try to untangle it from him, but I can't do it alone. Please help me save my friend. This is pretty nice and cinematic, this moment. We got Mabon in the sky, obviously, beaming Lahir. In the same way, you know, this is like the special action, remember, that we use to break the break bars of the Cryptus uh, Possessed. Um, so yeah, everyone gets here in 20 seconds, we can uh, move on. Somebody just asked, WP, are you going to do a video where you explain all of this Sutu story in a whole? Probably not. I, I don't really make content like that anymore. I kind of found it really depressing in, in as much as, like, I'm just regurgitating the information you could just play for yourself. I, I, there's something about it that I didn't, really didn't like. What I am happy to do, though, is a review his of the game and the story. Stable, but his mind is adrift. I fear this may have been too much to ask of him. Cryptus are trying to burrow their way in, and he's in no state to stop them on his own. It falls to me instead. The memory snares around the platform will isolate the memories weakening Lear and reveal the threats inside of them. Um, yeah, I really like hardcore burned out of that kind of content around season three, probably season four. Boils up from below, and the end comes with it. The manifestations of his memories will be as real as anything else. Rage at maximum. I will separate the threats as best I can. Now go. See, I don't really get the the idea here. Quickly, accelerate the memory snares so we can begin. Check this out, though. All the stuff blows up. We fall away, all the platforms move. Open world, this is happening as well. Really nice. I guess that a lot of this was technically possible even in End of Dragons, you know, like with the Leviathan event, I think something similar is going on. Um, but yeah, so we get the each platform, there's the there's essences already. again. I'll channel Lear's memories to the projectors, but you'll have to handle the rest. Those below must protect the snares, while those above handle whatever manifests from the memories. So, yeah, we, we have three defenses. This Once is where I usually am in this map. The corruption, we'll need to cleanse them. History is mine. Ready yourselves. So demons are going to try and Your break the snares, are which are beaming memories to the side platforms. A ripple in the earth. And the side platforms... So the white bars are the snare defense. The other ones are the, the corruption extractions. And I think bosses spawn up there. I kind of want to go have a look at them, and we'll see. Okay, yeah, Arcane Brilliance was buffed, right? So, it's actually a really, really strong heal. But it's also a blast finisher, so on Kata, you get a ton of fields. So if you blast it in a water field, it's an even more ridiculous heal. And then also, in theory, it gives you an aura, which then means, you know, your heal skill can be shocking aura, right? If, I, if I'm in air attunement and I use it, I get a shocking aura out of pressing my heal. And you can press it really regularly. The cooldown in PvP is like 15 seconds or something. I really think it could be super strong. But... I don't know. The cat heal is also incredibly strong. Doesn't really have a requirement that you tag someone. Also, it's a fast casting one as well. It's only three quarters of seconds, so it doesn't get interrupted too regularly either. And I wanted to play with it, but... Um, I was having problems with it. I can't remember what. Now that antitoxin's in, I might give it another go. 
Or you could do it with like flock runes, which uh, the the relic of the flock, sorry, which is now barrier every time, which is slightly better than it used to be. It's like a 1,300 barrier. So any spammable heal, that's pretty good, but then if I'm using Flock, I don't get Antitoxin. Or... So I don't know, but it's, it's something I want to play around with. For PvE, obviously, there's much less threatening you, so you can have fun with it. It's just the cooldown, it's just so low. And also, you know, if you're on a Hammer Catter or a Dagger Dagger Catter like I am here, you're in melee anyway, you know. So it's not, it's not like you're running in to tag them with it like you would to say on a Scepter build. Or had they existed a staff build? Brilliant Ember. Or will they exist a uh, pistol build? Unless, of course, oh, pistol is gut. melee. But I mean, it might be melee in one achievement. You never know. Don't get it burned. could be. Each platform has a different type of enemy related to his past. Oh, well, let's go up then and have a look. I'll break you so these skyscale launchers are in combat. We can jump on, and they'll give us a skyscale. Whether we have them, well, they should. That didn't work for some reason. I don't know. There, I just use my own mastery for it. Backies have the nerve to interrupt my night out. Hey, get your damn claws off of him. Oh, cool. So we do get a special dialogue here. Him on a night out. Oh, this is cool. This is a mounted raptor cryptus. Man, they must have had a lot of fun picking which enemies they want. It's like reskin. Shit. Maybe we can just climb up. Okay, uh, and then every now and then you do go back down and you use a special action, yeah, like this. On the here. The and you have to actually target him. We must press on if we are to bring Lear back. The corruption is spreading through his mind now, into his more recent memories. We have to hurry. So hold on, are there nine memories we get? I couldn't contain the power and the memory snares. We'll need to charge them again. I am sorry, friends. We just do this by flying into these. Is it nine memories? There's three islands and three phases, right? So... Hold on, Lear. You'll get through this. I won't fail you, my friend. We already had three memories just now. There'll be another three in a second, and then a final three. Let's, let's do the memory thing. Let's come up here. Go to the waste station. It still needs Another a nerf. Boy tear inside the I actually spent a bunch of time in Jizzlewood last month. Um, sharp blade, for the first sharp time blade. in ages. And the reason was because there was that Ice Brood Saga reward, the Dragon Scale armor, which was surprisingly really fucking expensive and a lot of work. I mean, Jesus Christ, that Dragon reveal. armor. That was like a real big final a prestige war reward at the end of the Ice Bridge Saga and it totally went over my head at the time. But yeah, I had to do Brizzlewood because I needed like loads and loads of war supply or whatever it is from that map. The same stuff you spend on the EMPs. I hope I got swords. enough in excess after earning the thing. Not now, not it was funny because I was doing it right around when Gyala Part 2 had come out and um, you know, the difference between Drizzlewood Part 2 and Gyala Part 2 in terms of, hey, these are both maps that get an extension where the meta grows with it. <laughs> it's crazy, you know? You get the Turtle Corridor versus the whole, like, the tank battle and the ice elemental and multiple phases with another claw of Jaw Mag. Is that it? Are we done? I've come down probably a bit too early. Oh no, there's a goddamn champion there. An ancient mountain. The problem with the um, the combo thing on the catalyst thing is the there's too long of an ICD on this really. Uh, the, the build is strong enough, so it doesn't need buffs. Don't get me wrong. But for the specific idea that oh, I can use arcane brilliance now. And that will mean I get Shocking Aura or whatever. You can't trust it because you will have comboed elsewhere in the previous 10 seconds. I mean, 10 seconds are very, very long wait. Armor enhanced. That's good. That telegraph there was nice. The pulsing red field? The cryptics are destroying the devices. What? Are we done with that? Destroy the memory snares to stop them. It's the only way. Oh, we break the snares now. Okay. I don't remember this. If we break the snares now, how does the end of the meta go? I have to say, you guys are all doing very well here. We don't appear to be struggling in the slightest. 
This this here, this is where it usually fails, by the way. This section, this bottom platform just gets completely overwhelmed, or you don't have enough people on the top. Combine and compound! And, uh, yeah, it, the meta will fail. So my recommendation to you guys, if you're playing this, definitely go to LFG, find a real squad. Like, we've got 50 people here, so we're very unlikely to fail. Treat it the same as tech. You know, it's not hard if it's a map with people on it. If there's less people, suddenly there's not enough for the turrets, there's not enough for this, that, and, you know, bone walls will be coming up, blah, 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 blah. Similar situation here. There won't be enough people to split across all three, especially disorganized, you know. You're going to have, like, eight people down below, three on one platform, one on another platform, zero on another. And, you know, what needs to happen is the eight in the middle need to spread out. You could do it, but because it's disorganized, no one really knows whose responsibility it is to move. So. A ripple in the earth. I'll break you down. Part of a volcano. Part and my AOIs just feel so weak. 2k a tick. Your soul is mine. Even if that was 4k a tick, I would still feel pretty crappy about sitting there air out or Drawing altering. magic from each other somehow. Need to kill them all at once. Okay, kill them all. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you have a sink burn. So again, it, like, we all just flew away, but... Oh, nobody's there here. Okay, so it's just... It's just the two islands that we have to sink burn? Oh no, it's because we already killed one. Wow, we wow, we really did that badly. Ah, hello, he respawned. Haha, -ha. we killed it too quick. Okay, so I think I just wait here and hold DPS. It's hard because I got the tag. I think I need to go over here because everyone's spamming over here now. We need to stay. Oh, fucking hell. Okay, that was much trickier to get into that updraft than I thought. Okay, so yeah. They're going a bit ham on memory too. Lear's sanity's dropping. Alright, here we go. So we just burn this as hard as possible now and I think we're fine. Oh, why is he still invulnerable? Come on! He's allowed to hit us while he's invulnerable? I just blew all my CC. Alright, this is better. There we go. I like sink burns in uh, open world metas. You know, the whole people spamming picnic and stuff at uh, Tarir. I, I really like that stuff. I think it's really fun. I mean, and everyone has the information. Everyone sees the bars, you know. Uh, I, I think a lot of my good memories in um, meta stream. events are from experiences like that. Triple Trouble has the very Sorry. famous sink burn. The there we go. Now number two needs to die. Oh my god, why is number two not dying? Holy Sir, crap. Oh, there we go. They're desperate. Everyone to me. Now is our chance to finish them. We target Lahir and press Purge Corruption. And I guess you could do it from your sky scale because a lot of people are up there doing it. Wait, what's this? Attack a foe? Why can't I use my special action? We become one. Oh, there we go. It's it's triggering now. That was weird. It wasn't working for a while. Am I targeting the wrong thing? Oh, it's the top Lahir. It's the up Lahir. My Where? services seem to have sufficed. Where? Can you hear me? Now, would you quit shouting? Got enough of a headache as it is. But I do feel better with that nonsense off my mind. Sharper still. It is a relief to see you well, my friend. Well then, what do you say we get back home? Okay, now I was warned, so we're gonna go through this portal. I would have rathered it if this portal wasn't here. I think people should platform up to this. The tower and wizards keep talking about it. And we're going to let a demon in, guys. I haven't seen anything oh, like it. Yes, guard is ridiculous with security here. No. All that work wasn't enough. It was clear. Normal? That's almost a compliment coming from you. Let's enjoy that while we can. It's fine. Is it because yes. it's sentient and Naos is sentient? So you do have fingers? 
Okay, these guys, there's about a thousand things to talk about here. There are chests, but they're crap, so don't worry. I'm just going to speak to these guys and get as much as I can. You've done well here, better than I could have hoped. Now, is there anything I could do for you? So the key only partly worked. What do we do now? We will need to find additional Damn solutions, it, it's it voice seems. acted. It's not written. But things are in motion, and there is value in that. For now, we should enjoy this victory. We're only given so many of these, after all. Yeah, it is annoying. We get almost no time. The Pather conversation was overlapping with their conversation, and now we got a lot here. Do you feel guilty about having to remove memories? Of course. We pay a heavy cost to join the Order, and that mantle weighs heavy on my shoulders, even after all this time. But if we are going to make decisions for all of Tyria, we must be free of entanglements with it. No one joins the court without understanding that. Proud of each of them. Their sacrifice is not lost on me. So they ma they just specifically decide it's protocol to remove memories. It doesn't have to happen, but they choose to have it happen. After all this, I bet you could use a vacation. <laughs> Maybe so. I'll admit, there's been little time Get for rest healthy. around here as of late. But when I see the strength of my fellows on the court, the courage of the ward, I know this is where I belong. He's like, the truth is, even in these dark times, there's nowhere I'd rather be. Okay, so there you go. So that's Mabon's dialogue here. Let's go to Lahir. Or Lear. Uh, well, that was quite an experience, wasn't it? I suppose you got some questions. Do you regret losing your memories? No. No, I don't. There's a lot that is missing since I joined the Wizards, but I've got a lot of memories with them. What made those memories special? also made them dangerous to our enemies. Our work is too important to risk that. Besides, just because I don't remember it doesn't mean it didn't happen. For me, for us, that has to be enough. I really like this thing about Rage the memory loss. Maximum. Are you feeling better? I'm getting there. It was rough for a while having those things crawling around in my head. Luckily, that stiff kick to the head you gave me is just what the doctor ordered. Sometimes that's what it takes. But if you had any lingering doubts about how serious the situation is, I hopefully this has cleared them. The tower's defenses are turning on again. We won't have long before it expels us. A pretty unpleasant step, you can take my word for that. Nearly lost a foot last time. <sighs> so what now then? We'll learn what we can while we're here. Hopefully it will be enough. Look at that, I almost ha didn't have time to even speak to them before that moved forward. Okay, so yeah, I get 90 seconds now. And there's a bunch of law books in here, not to mention the chest. The chest, I don't know, but they're so unbelievably bad. This is the same studio that gave us, like, the Tarir chest run. And here's what they give us on this, unidentified gear. I mean, it's so bad. The, the icons don't even disappear from the minimap when you collect the chests. It's so, I mean, it's crazy. So we can probably pick a book to read, all right? So let's do, like, the leftmost book on the ground floor. So, and look how good all these books are. Records of the Deaths of the Elder Dragons. Seer Curses and Rituals. Let's read this one. And look, they're meaty. It's insane. I've got 50 seconds to read this. The beginning, forward by Isgaran. It is with little surprise to those in the Astral Ward or Wizard's Court that a great deal of the magic and phenomena that surround us are of seer origin. While many of these secrets should remain just that, secret, it's critical to understand the nature of the Wizard's magic in order to successfully navigate your time in this organization. Every day, in some unique way, you will be interacting with these powers. Some of these spells and curses are harmless, but some could kill you on the spot should you not approach them with utmost respect. Seer knowledge, I think these are in the uh, the instance actually in a second, so we might be alright. Seer knowledge is not like anything you've experienced before. The easiest place to start would be, well, myself. Being one of the, if not the only, remaining seers left within the bounds of Tyria, I'm something that, uh, of a phenomenon. Similarly, the ritual process that allows one to connect with the flow of magic to the well and becomes a wizard, the most appropriate translation of the original tongue is of the same origin and requires a great deal of blood time and focus to complete. In this book, I'll walk you through my anecdotal experiences and opinions surrounding these magics. <gasps> it's gone. I'm sorry, I tried. I really tried. Accelerating. And we're out. So, yeah, uh, they don't give us very long. I think some of those books, though, I think some of those books are available in the tower. Um, which we now get to visit, but we have to do an instance, so we can walk up to it now. 
this meta is a WP killer when it comes to reading law. Yeah, well, look, it's a way of forcing me to do the meta a bunch of times. In theory, if those books don't, I've definitely, that thing I just read, I've definitely read before. Okay, so the point, the question now is, all right, did I read it last time I did the meta? In which case, that's an odd coincidence because there were a lot of books there. Or did I read it in the actual, the Arborstone edition of that? Because the whole Wizard Sour essentially works like Arborstone. Um, and if you guys remember, Arborstone was very rich and had lots and lots of stuff going on. Uh, likewise, the Wizard's Tower does too. I mean, it's very they really did it perfectly. I wouldn't have wanted the Wizard's Tower in any other way, I think, given the whole mini X-Pack set up and that there's going to be a mini X-Pack about it. It just makes too much sense to make it like Arborstone. I would like in the upcoming story patches now for... Um, the, the Wizard's Tower to get attacked or something. I don't know. But we do get to experience some combat in there in the next story instance, so. Just go to the wiki WP. I mean, we can. If push comes to shove, I mean, we definitely can. Uh, not today. Um, we'll read what we can just under normal gameplay first. So this is the tower that the wizards keep talking about. I haven't seen anything like it. It looks perfectly normal normal that's almost a compliment coming from you it's i can't quite place my things both. so you do have fingers Very funny. wp look at the notification you got above your thing Complete Rift Hunts and Gain Essence. Gatherer of Essence. I think that was just the optional thing a second ago, wasn't it? Do I not actually have that? That's Act 2, isn't it? Gatherer of Essence. Complete Rift Hunts and Gain Essence. As in right now? I mean, it doesn't actually say the objective here. But you'll see I've got one other thing, a sister here. That's going to be in, in a second. Um, this is cool, by the way. I feel very cozy here. I like this area. I, it might be because of the pre-searing music playing in the background. Also, look at this. The notification they give us when we go out of bounds, which hasn't popped now for some reason. Uh, what? Oh, there we go. Yeah, you've hit a strong wind current and will be pushed back if you continue further. I like that. Because obviously normally it's a water current and the game's never actually changed that message based on whether you're high or low. But in this expansion they can do that. They can say, oh, well, look, it's a wind thing now. You have to do one or the other. The ghost sword one? I don't know what you mean by ghost sword. It's kind of unfortunate you can't visit south, south, Southern Wizards Tower from the outpost after clearing the story bit. So you're limited to just the northern half. I don't know. Is it that I mean, it's very good. I, I kind of don't care because there's so much going on there. Oh, by the way, I actually made a mistake. When I did the Skyscale dogfight, uh, did I mention this yesterday? Uh, with Boots, um, I used a TP to a friend and I was on Liss. And it means that Liss has technically been in the tower already. That's why I can waypoint up there right now. Even though, in theory, I shouldn't have been at the story till right now. I actually can enter the instance. Actually, I still, in theory, can't do it. Okay, so the story is that we've opened the front door with the key. But a lot of the tower is still shut down. Look at that, by the way. Look, there's still corruption like, on the wall. I wonder if they do, like, an evil tower thing, you know? <laughs> if the tower is sentient, and the point is that demons can possess sentient creatures... Surely what they're building to, surely what this story is becoming is that the whole tower is going to be corrupted, you know? Surely. Hello. It's so much larger up close. It has taken on many facades over It's a great time. line. The inside, however, has remained the same. Yeah. So, what's the plan? With the infused key in hand, we can enter the courtyard. Just takes a good lick of concentrated magic to calm it down. Whatever we encounter inside, I should be able to disarm it in Iskarin's absence. You do whatever you need to, Mabon. I'll guard you. Oh, was it? 
Was the loading screen art, art Without, the classic Wizard's ado. Tower concept art? That's great if it was. Behind me, all of you. Yeah, it's so much bigger up close. It's really good. The thing where it changes appearances, I don't know. They just want to explain why the model is so much more elaborate and stuff right now. Them saying it's the same on the inside, though. I think it's they're trying to have their cake and eat it, too. By saying it changes appearances so constantly, you kind of rob people of the fantasy of exploring it. But by saying the inside is always the same, you kind of give that fantasy back, you know? Because you've got to think, you've got to picture the players that have been staring at the wizard's tower, hovering over Garenhoff. And then it's like, when you finally get to explore it, it's a different wizard's tower. That would suck. So I think they're trying to avoid that with that little bit of dialogue there, you know. But so here, for example, that's a huge heal I just gave myself with Arcane Brilliance. Because I get to, in PvE especially, you get to tag five targets with it. I don't know though, the, the Catalyst one is also a huge heal, and it cleanses like mad as well, so... Even Skrid is growing tired. They never pause to smell the air! And I don't know, I tend to play very low vitality, high toughness builds in PvP. And um... What I don't Armor want is big heals, what I want is lots of regular small heals. And dust. yes, this is a low cooldown, but you know, Signet. Signet is a lot of very low cooldown little pills. And I can never be interrupted the signet passive. How did they get inside? Same goes the here. I like the Lear, sorry, oh god, I have stuck on this crappy pronunciation of it and I just can't get rid of it now. Oh we can D squad now. Well done guys by the way. That was really cool. We filled that real quick and just destroyed the matter. Uh does my bomb hear me, no. old friend? Is that who is that? <gasps> it's Lyra at the top of the stairs there as well. I am. With me, Commander. We need to. Whoa there! Don't take a swing at me, you half witted headache. <laughs> That's such a good description. See, half witted because it's half of him. There you go, Lyra. And he's Cryptus possessed. The power. An ancient mountain. So we're gonna fight him, and then we'll probably use the special action on him. Never a thousand storms. I'm waiting for air there, so I can give my. You know, one thing I've always really wanted to be able to do in Guild Wars. You know, we're fighting a bunch of, alongside a bunch of allies here. The voices. Turn your veins to Deldramore. Armor enhanced. Count the astral planes. One, two. In your a head. Ember. In Release. your head. Turn your veins to Delgemore. Count the astral planes. That's really weird, you know. I don't actually know kind of what he means by count the astral planes there. I guess some Delgemore cult, some dwarven culture stuff we were never really privy to before. Um, yeah, I, one thing I've always wanted in PvE is to be able to play a healer, but like you need to be able to buff like Mabon's damage here, like mad. So you know there's that code in the game where it's like minions take no damage unless they're being specifically targeted. I wonder if something like that could be done where like NPC allies, when you heal them or give them might, the might counts for more. That would probably break so much shit, it's unreal. But I really want to be able to play like a support and just have everyone else do the damage, you know. But in Guild Wars, we're just so used to the fact that they do zero damage and that they're useless. You know, I think this is probably because I've been playing Baldur's Gate. Channel the power to pull the cryptus corruption from inside him. Me, the other one. And in Baldur's Gate, you know, if you ever get an ally of any kind, they're really fun to play and, you know, they, they're useful and stuff. Alright, here we go. So we use the uh, special action. I need to remember I can move with it. I purge you, Saruman! Quickly, destroy the demonic parasite before it returns and heals him! There we go. Part of a volcano. Mm. King Theoden is restored. We are he calm. Runs away apparently. No, How many is. astral planes did you count? Forty-eight. What? That's two more. That we've no time for banter, Lear. The fight is hardly done. If I can channel the tower, we can quell its storm. Well, come on, my boy. It's just bants, man. It's just bants. Chill out. You still able to fight? I should be good. Because you spent enough time taking swings at us instead of the cryptus, you lout. Focus. I like how one of them is much more clean shaven. And seems to have taken more care of his hair and That's stuff. How amazing so, yeah, you've got Lear, the, 
the facet of logic. Oh, that's what it is. I thought it was like obsession and emotion or something. It's logic and emotion. Those are his two facets. And the one of logic was trapped in here. Keep fighting them all. Do not desist. Not yet. Now, it's very good the waiting sorrow made us the heart of the obscure, eh? An ancient if they mountain. didn't, we'd really be struggling with a lot of this stuff. Oh, man, there's a lot of story for them to get through in these next three patches. By the way, I, you know, I, that's been a curiosity of this as we went into this. The idea that, like, oh, would it really work having a bit of a story and then the other story later? It does work, I, I think, already, I can tell. There's, there's something a bit awkward about the end of the expansion that I think, in retrospect, is going to look really stupid. And that's that... You, you'll see it soon, in a couple of days. When we get to the end of the story, there's going to be like a big victory is, uh, instance. You know, we're always sitting around, partying, talking to people and stuff. And that, to me, felt like it probably didn't need to be there. Because the expansion's not that long. And half the story is completely unresolved. In the future, we're just going to roll on. It's going to feel like a weird stopping point. I mean, it's it's completely narratively justified. Don't get me wrong, but I think it it's just it, it's, that's that's the only bit that feels a bit clunky to me, or will feel clunky in subsequent patches. I I guess. I mean, maybe it won't. A Ooh, winter storm. To use this water thing. <sighs> Raban, are, are you okay? A I just dream. need to rest my spirit. Let me take a look at you. Oh, thank the stars. You live. I'm okay, Dagda. I'm fine. So am I. Nobody asked you. I need a leash for you both. I'm sure there were more intuitive ways to handle that situation. Shh. It's ready for us. Finally. Let's head inside. I love this icon up here. So we're going to chain two instances together here. Uh, Can I at I least speak to people? This. And this is good. This is kind of the cast of this expansion you're looking at right here, with a couple of exceptions: Mabon, Lear, Urchik, Glade, Zoja, Dagda, Wayno, and Frode. Um, this is sort of our adventuring party. So okay, let's read this now. We're we're finally well. We kind of could have done this earlier. Let's quickly finish reading this. So Mother of Stars. So we didn't know about Zoja, and we're not sure whether we should bring the rest of the pact and the airships and Logan and so on. Everyone's busy tracking down Gag Dagda and Izgarin, the other two remaining wizards, the latter being the leader of the organization. So I met up with Frode at one of the Astral Wards outposts to see how I could help. He informed me of one of their more hands-on divisions, the Rift Hunter. We read that already. I felt a strong connection to the... Uh, the, the heart of the obscure. Frode also introduced me to one of his right hand soldiers, a brass brassier syrup. We already read that. After tuning my comms device to the Astral Ward's local fluctuations, further separating me from contacting my allies at home. So yeah, we're out of contact with Timey and Co now, right? Because we're only on their network. That wasn't very clear to me until reading this. I added Rian in. Que uh, I aided Rian in quelling some of the cryptus and sealing rifts before Zoja and Mabon called me back to camp. Dagda had been found. Things weren't looking good. I'm headed out to meet them in the sprawling fractured islands of the archipelago to find them. These particular fractals, as they've been described to me, are a complete marvel. They've been used by Isgarin and the wizards for centuries to test the many possibilities that the future may contain in an attempt to predict future threats. When Isgarin's magic was fractured by the end of the dragon cycle, these tiny realities were ripped from the mists and manifested here above Tyria. They're not entirely dissimilar from the fractals monitored by Dessa, from what I can tell. Dessa's naturally occurring in the mists, and these deliberately formed. But the inhabitants that live within these are flesh and bone. So, um, there it doesn't man mention that some of these islands can appear in other rea that they were cast throughout the mists. They didn't re-specify that in the story journal, which kind of makes me worried about the whole Divinity's Reach theory, because you'd think if... You'd think if that was a really important information, it would be specified in both places. And if it's not, then maybe not. But here, clarification that the end of the dragon cycle caused this disaster. How exactly it caused this disaster? 
I, I don't know. They haven't given us any details. I hope they do. It might be that Liss is just wrong about this as well and that something else was going on. Um, in map 2, Amitas will teach us a lot about that. There's this thing there called the White World Spire and so on, but we're getting spoilery, I guess. Anyway, these are flesh and bone. They're outside of the mist. They're alive, and I can't imagine the fear they're experiencing. The Astral Ward are doing what they can to contain the local threats, but I'm not sure if anyone really knows what to do with the inhabitants. All I know is their fear is potent to the Cryptus. They're being hunted, and keeping those inhabitants safe should be one of the ward's leading priorities. This is interesting. So we kind of have two disasters going on at once. One is the millennia-long threat of the Cryptus. Two is the Dragon Cycle ended and caused these fractals to spin out here. And it just so happens that because this is a disaster and these people are scared, the Cryptus are really hungry for them. Doesn't that mean any disaster anywhere in Tyria at any point is susceptible to demon influence now? But then again, all these demons are Eparch's cohort. The and maybe that's why there's specific targeting going on here because of their association with the Astral Ward. Remember, Epark went to the ward and got turned away. So I don't know. Um, and meanwhile, you just have other random demons doing things like we saw in Gyala. What do they call them? Wanderers? And maybe Kanaksai in the Silent Surf Fractal is also a wanderer. Thankfully, though, Zodra and the others were able to pinpoint Dagda's location in one of these fractals. Oh, we had a donation there. Uh, New Zealand, $5, I think that is, from Zach. Thanks, man. That's really nice of you. That's very nice, thank you. Head of long-term fan here. Been around since season three. Caught you live and figured you'd show, you my, show your support. Thank you very much, man. That's really, really nice of you. Um, that's very cool. Uh, thankfully, those Zoja and the others were able to pinpoint Dagda's location on one of these fractals. By the way, if any of you guys do donate and leave a comment, you can obviously ask a question or something. I feel like I'll, I can give you a more meaningful response if, if, if you want to know something or whatever. Uh, but yeah, uh, Dagda's location, um, an abandoned observatory fixed inside one of the floating islands. Frode and Wayne, that's interesting, fixed inside. It was kind of just on top really, wasn't it? I guess that counts as inside. We ventured in there, a small group, so not as to overwhelm Dagda under the worst of circumstances. <laughs> we didn't just do that with Lahir here, did we? We did a whole group against him. Before we reached the wizard, Seri, one of Dagda's apprentices, ambushed us inside of the cave. She was gone, the entirety of her being possessed by a cryptus. With no hope of quelling the beast inside her, death was her mercy. It's funny, why couldn't we cleanse her like we've cleansed the others? Zodja took a moment to mourn before we pushed forwards, clearly affected by the loss of found family, as she called it. She has an entire life here, new friends, a mentor, I'm the, I'm the stranger looking in. We found Dagda, a Jotun from another era of Tyrian history, inside the observatory. Or as Zodja described her, the Wizard of the Celestial. My presence immediately put Dagda on the defensive. She snarled in fear, claiming I was there to kill her as I had so many others. Apparently my reputation as the champion of an Elder Dragon, as the champion of an Elder Dragon, pre uh, preceded me. To her, I was as unpredictable as Drakkar or Krakatorix branded. Hostile and unfeeling. That's all she saw. And I've, I've never been met with that kind of hostility before. See, this is where the story journal falls apart a little bit. I kind of don't like it when they... I don't know, is that true? The commanders never... I mean, the commanders fought to the death a lot of people who hate the commander. <laughs> but we've never seen that kind of hostility. Um... I really like this as well. I find it very curious. They're talking about Drakkar or Kraukatorix branded. Is it possible that they were like, okay, what are other champions? And they were like, well, the Shatter is a champion. But they were like, mm, should we compare the commander to the Shatterer? That seems a bit weird. Let's just make it the branded. You know? Is that what happened there? <laughs> and that's why... I mean, why the branded? Why not any other dragon minion group? Oh, because we're Orin's champion, and Orin is kind of that family line. So we're kindred to the branded in a way, I suppose. Dagda was clearly struggling against something or someone, and my arrival exacerbated her rage. Zodja attempted to frame my involvement as benevolent, but taking things out talking things out clearly wasn't going to work, as she fought back against whatever voice lingered in her own mind. Zodja cast a barrier over the arena to trap her inside, and when I... Oh, that barrier was Zodja's doing? And when I attempted to expel whichever... Because th I think in the actual instance when we walked there, the barrier was already up, wasn't it? Where I attempted to expel um, whichever threat was occupying Dagda's mind, she fought back with the power of the cosmos itself, summoning all manner of otherworldly entities throughout a drawn-out fight. 
after a brutal fight against one, not one, but an entire... And by the way, I believe that's one of the strike missions. One of the two strike missions is that, is that Dagda fight. And when you think against the Cosmos itself, is that is that really justified? Um, I mean, in theory, we could go do that strike mission right now. I was thinking we'd do them at the end of the story, but hey. You'll see more of that in the strike, I think. Especially when they do the CM, hopefully. Obviously, I don't know that for sure, but yeah. Uh, after a brutal fight against not one, but an entire hive of demons led by someone named Vanda. Um, yeah, who the, who was this Vanda? Vanda's hive. That's what Paytha said. Paytha teased in my... Yeah, she teased that information in our ear. Dagda came to her senses. Despite being cleansed... Vanda isn't the monster in Meta 2, is it? The completely insane monster. I don't think it is. Despite being cleansed and my role in freeing her from possession, her disposition towards me was unchanged. Zodja tried to convince Dagda that I'm an ally and not some unpredictable force of nature, but to no avail. Not only does the ward need to earn my trust, I need to earn theirs. Leah had mentioned that the Astral Ward had been watching me as they watched all magical anomalies. At best, this was out of curiosity, but at worst, it was out of fear. I suppose I'd be afraid of me too if I was a passive observer. I'd help to kill dragons, a god. But does this raise the que all this raises the question, why didn't they intervene? Did they ever consider ending me for the greater good of Tyria? And I swear we just saw a book a second ago that was like the Astral Ward's observation about the defeats of the dragons, but we never got to read it. Okay, while Dagda, whoever bristles whenever I get near, focused on recovery, I helped Rian take down more cryptists throughout the archipelago. When Dagda uh, cleansed and almost battle ready, our next major goal is helping Lear track down his other half. Apparently, and I'm writing this out simply to make sure I understand the very concept, he can split his consciousness in two. A wild tactic that allows him to better protect himself from the cryptist possession. If even one half is compromised and completely missing, at least the other is ready and able to help. Not only are they nearly immortal, but the wizards possess unique magical abilities unlike anything I've ever encountered. And maybe I'm glad I haven't. While I lingered at the camp, Frodo... I'm really ke keen to see if the devs elaborate more on this. Like, why do the wizards court get superpowers, basically, right? It's the Tyrion equivalent of being superheroes. While I lingered at the camp, Frodo introduced me to two more members of the Astral Ward who would be aiding us in the days to come. Urchik, a shockingly eloquent script, and Gladium, a former member of the Char Legions. Urchik possessed a deep admiration for my past accomplishments, giving me at least one proper ally in this mystical, unknown facet of the world. And this works so well, this beat is so good to me. Like, I really like that script a lot more than the other characters, just because we have that like connection, you know? It's like some lost in translation shit, you know, where you're 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 far away from home, everything's alien and weird and strange, and but you you get that connection with that one other person and it's somehow deeper for it, you know. I'm not saying we're gonna fall in love with Urchik and whisper something in Urchik's ear before kissing them and never seeing them again. And can I just say at the end of that, they're definitely not getting together, okay? It sort of ruins the movie. For, Mo for Bill Murray and Scarlett Johansson to be like, yeah, let's run away together. That's not how that movie ends. Just by the way, everyone in the YouTube comments who thinks it's... That's such a strange fucking movie. I love that film so much. But you read people and they're like, oh, this is the best depiction of a platonic relationship I've ever seen. It's clearly not a platonic relationship. Clearly not. Whatever. Whatever. I'm not going to rant about Lost in Translation here. Uh, unknown facts of the world, she and Glade were a welcome distraction and maybe the warmest introductions I've had since arriving. I headed back into the wizard's fractals to track down rifts and search for evidence of bad Lear, aptly titled by Urchik to denote the dwarves' crankier half. While the rest of the team made plans for us to push towards the tower, the march being our next objective. While I was navigating the islands, however, a voice which didn't belong to Paytha rang in my head, froze me in place. It belonged to a cryptus named Eparch. I'm glad to actually see this here, because I wasn't sure if I was spoiling the name. <laughs> Eparch the Midnight King. Every time I read the Midnight King, by the way, it makes me think of the Yellow King. You know, from True Detective, season one. And he's on the hunt for Isgarin. The voice was so menacing that even Paytha stirred. Her words quickly overcame his and pushed him aside. She warned me of speaking his name too loudly for fear of attracting Eparch's gaze. Once again, and maybe against my better judgment, I think I'll listen to her. Okay. And then we went to the camp. And then... Just as we were departing... And we read that bit... And then this will be probably recap for the, the next episode, to be honest. We don't need to recap all of that. That's what we just did. Okay, so here we go. The Tower of Secrets. Let's break into the rest of the Wizard Tower. 
And that loading the screen was the, you know, the key art and the press and the promotional stuff. Worst movie ever, really, Rebecca. You don't like Lost in Translation. I think it's got it's a certain vibe. It's like a sensory movie, you know. It's not a plot heavy movie. You know, it's not it's not much of a story. It's more of an idea, and I know how that's all very pretentious, airy, arty farty kind of it sounds flimsy. But I think the sound mix in that movie is one of the best I've ever heard. Like it's why you can watch that movie and get like a sense of nostalgia and like sense of place and being and it really does feel like you know you're on holiday and it does feel like you're a fish out of water there's a certain feeling and a vibe to the movie that i think really is unmatched and it mostly comes from the sound mix um but i think it is, it is romantic as well and it, there's something special about it i like that film we need to make sure the southern wings are clear before we unlock the whole of confluence zoja urchik and gladium with me we'll head east We'll head to the west. Frode, you know. Dagda. Yeah. Go with the group that needs you the most, Commander. So, <laughs> I, I, I was playing the, the, my first playthrough. As I say, we were in a party. And we got to this, and it was like... Okay, first let me interact with this. Because it's begging me to. Mysterious energy. Mysterious energy hovers in the air above a symbol affixed to the wall, crackling with powerful magic. You hear a faint resonant hum from a room on the other side. Maybe whatever powers this spells nearby, I'll keep that in mind. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Is that a bonus area if I find something to depower? Right, so we were playing as a group and we were all like, okay, who do we want to go with? And we look to the right or whatever, and who do you see? Wayna, a new character we've barely spoken to. And now I like her, old lady Asura, it's kind of cool, but we've barely spoken to. Let's be real. It's a Guild Wars expansion. It's pretty thin, okay? We've had maybe far, four minutes of interaction with this character, really, realistically. So I don't really know them very much. Frode, I don't really know them. The new character, don't really know them very much. Lear, one of the halves of Lear, the Wizard of Judgment, okay? Not Facet anymore, just Wizard of Judgment. Wait, so that's Judgment... I thought it was Logic and Emotion. Now what is it? It's Judgment and... Oh, is it both Lears over there? Where's the other Lear? Whatever. And then Dagda, who, again, is kind of a cool character, but we've barely spoken to. And there's an interesting tension there with Dagda. So just a bunch of nobodies, essentially. Randoms. New, new people that we don't know, okay? No names. Or a fucking Masat Zodja and, you know, two amazing comic relief characters that, yes, are new, but have had a really big impact immediately because th those kinds of character archetypes do that. They can... You know, because they're just so well-defined and they're kind of funny and they're kind of cute straight away. And it's just like, well, obviously we're going to go over here. Obviously. Who would ever pick this side? <laughs> ever. Um, or maybe he's the Wizard of Judgment because he's recombined now. Does it, can, can he do that? I guess he can. Maybe that's why he's the Wizard of Judgment now and that's why there's only one. I think he's probably recombined. So, yeah, anyway, last time I went over there with Mabon, the Massar, okay, and Zodja, the old friend, and these two great characters. Uh, this time we're going to go over here. And if any of you guys feel similar to me about that, that this was just a crazy decision, I think they should have swapped some stuff around here. Maybe Mabon should swap with Dagda. I think that would be a good trade. That would be really tricky because... Dagda's really interesting too. I, I really like Dagda, kind of a bit nervous around her and stuff, and it's a fucking Jotun, and I want to hear stuff with her. Zodja's obviously, a, I, that's probably a really good mix if they had done that. But anyway, yeah, so this time I go this side, this gives me this other achievement. Hello, you guys, the new crew. How about it, Commander, with us? Look at how cool this guy looks. Yeah, I'll join you. He's in the Is arcane outfit, by the way. I used that for my dervish set for ages. Rejoining? Can't rest knowing our home is overrun by cryptos, can I? I'll be fine, Dagda. Haven't felt this good ahead of a fight in a long time. I feel like this instance oh, shouldn't be clear blue skies. It should be like grim and cloudy, and because I mean the idea is this place is overrun. An ancient mountain. So yeah, this is all new dialogue to me though, because I've never seen this. Who knows what these guys will talk about? To be An honest, I don't really trench. remember what the other crew talks about. A brilliant ember. And we all meet up again later. I think it's a cool way of doing an instance, by the way. You get to pick which, which characters you want to be with. You did this side first. You're interested in the new people? Yeah, well, me too. But I'm much more interested in the other dust. new people. Zodja, let's be real, is essentially a new person. There's so much unspoken between us at this point. 
There's a lot to discover about everyone on either side of that corridor. All these little rooms are just jam-packed with interactables um, when we get to the Arborstone version of this. Like, it's crazy. I don't even really know how I'm going to properly explore this place and read everything. There might be achievements tracking having interacted with everything. When push comes to shove, though, the wiki is just so amazing. The people who contribute to that wiki, man. Do they still do those gold prizes for people? Because they really deserve it. There's probably just going to be a list on the wiki, and you can just click down through it, and every lore book will be on there. So it will be impossible to miss anything. But, um, you know, I'll do some in-game exploration first before, before we get to that. So another mysterious essence energy here. Flames envelop this tree, and within them appears to be a mysterious energy powered by magic unlike anything you've seen. The blistering heat prevents you from getting a closer look. After we clear the tower, I can find something that will douse the flames. Oh yeah, I think actually, it, yeah, in, in in chat, Banjo just said it. I think in this instance, there's already a lot of interactables, actually. A brilliant ember. This is the southern part of the tower. You won't be able to come back here in the actual instance. Okay, well, we can do it in the instance. I mean, I don't mind. One of the, there are some very long instances storms. at the Wizard's Tower. With, like, a lot to interact with and a lot to do. They could have wrecked any other room. I'll organize a search party to recover any stolen artifacts after the siege. Here you go. Look at all these. They ate my lotus from Dashka. We can get you another lotus. Look at this. Dashka is referenced. how long it took me to get into that crypt. Balls for a flop. Wow. Okay. If I don't go through there, will they pause? Will they stop speaking? So he he plundered a crypt in Dajka. Okay. You know how I've been saying how good the lore is and they cover a ton of topics and they do a lot blah, 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 blah. The one caveat I have had to that is it also sort of feels like there's a little bit too little. Like, if I could push it a bit further, what I would want is just more discussion about new things. Like, a candid mention of this lake, for example, you know? Or a candid mention of some area in Kryta we've never been to, or of Ascalon, or some new legend, some new myth, some new area of the world, so something, just random little, and it really doesn't have to mean very much or anything, but just something, because, you know, this Astral Ward, they don't just look at Cantha, Ilona, and, um, uh, uh, and, and Tyria, Core Tyria, Kryta, and so on. In theory, they know a lot about a lot, like, you know, like a little reference to the Battle Isles and stuff. I hadn't seen too much of that. I saw a lot of very pointed lore and a lot of very pointed, like, little um, references to, like, tangibles we already knew about. But, like, new stuff? Not very often, if ever. And I was going to say, basically, I haven't seen that. And obviously, I'm withholding a lot of my judgment for the fact I haven't seen all the content yet. So I'm really happy with this Dajka reference here, because that's exactly what that is. Dajka, if you guys don't know, is this named region. Like, over... Oh, God. Oh, no, that's Dizlana. Oh, here's Dajka. It's this named region here, which only really appeared on the map in Guild Wars 2. Um, and then you've got Dizlana over here as well. And that's cool. I, li I like to hear that. Um, that's exactly what I was saying. So that's, that's cool. And I hadn't seen that the first time. The other thing, by the way, I really want to talk about. I mentioned this in Spud the other day. I can't, oh, we can't see it. Okay, you know how in the... Oh, I'll do the the rant late. Oh, no, but it's going to be so much later. You know you know, on the bottom left of the map here, on, uh, you get, like, the compass. Sorry, the bottom right of the map, you get the co compass, and you can click, like, a button that will snap you to the Eye of the North areas. A button will snap you all the way down here to EOD. You guys might not have noticed it yet, but with the new expansion, there's a new intercardinal on the um, northwest section, and it's yellow, and you click it, and it snaps you to the horn of the Maguma. And I said in Spud Discord the other day, doesn't the fact that they filled in an intercardinal on the same UI suggest that there'll probably be an intercardinal on the top right for another mini X pack, and another one on the bottom left for another mini X pack, and another one on the bottom right for mini X pack? And this whole conversation would go much better if you could actually see the user interface on screen. So if you're in game, press M and see what I mean, right? So, that could mean we get a mini x pack somewhere up here next. Or at some point. Blaze Ridge Mountains, I think someone mentioned in the Discord. And it could mean we get one on the bottom right. Which could be 
Dislana slash this island here. This island's always been interesting to me since it appeared on the map. Or maybe all the way down here would be bottom right. Bottom left is really tricky because there's really nothing. I mean, that would be the Canther expansion maybe. I don't know. Kirin Peak. Stuff like that. Um, I, I don't really know how that leaves them for the Battle Isles. You know, maybe they can't fill that in in the end. Uh, or Dislana as was now just mentioned. Dajka, sorry, as was now mentioned. But whatever, you know. So he planted a crypt at Dajka. Whose crypt was it? What people lived there? Okay, should I interact with this stuff now or do it later? I'll do it now, because why not? So this is like Lahir's quarters. I'm sure you get this in the open world instance. There's a goblet. This golden goblet looks to be a few years old. And it's unremarkable, save for an engraving on the inside, which re uh, reads, Lear non-tossing champion of 1320 AE. <laughs> so that was shortly before um, this game, basically. We're on 36 at the moment. Year 1 is 26. So this is basically during the events of Edge of Destiny. The novel, Edge of Destiny. Lear won this. I'm not sure I want to know. Oh, no, wow, that fucking dialogue, that's funny. That now make, makes me think that he wanked a dwarf, uh, a Norn off. <laughs> Which is clearly not what they were going for. They meant, like, tossing him over their head or something. But no, ArenaNet, you've written that. I'm not sure I want to know. And now I'm thinking about dwarf Norn. Fick, slash Fick. Uh, this appears to be a raven totem, exactly like the ones in Bajora Marches, though it doesn't respond to your touch, and the ambient magic within appears muted. How did this get here? Well, he must have been there, or associated with their creation. There's some weapon crates. These crates are filled with ancient dwarven weapons. They look to be hundreds of years old, and aside from a few flecks of rust and mildew, they look as strong as the day they were forged. Now that's quality craftsmanship. Possibly a reference to an NPC response. Also, just Delgin more steel, guys. You know, badass stuff. There's a destroyer egg here. This is very cool. Obviously, there are still Risen bumbling around in ore. You know, Aureen was trying to deal with any remaining branded. The start of uh, the Icebridge Saga, we might have seen the final branded die. The Char had it. You know, banger. Oh, what an instance that was. Man, they really got the start of the Icebridge Saga so well. You know, with banger being made to look a fool with Aureen interrupting. Anyway, oh god. Uh, what about the destroyers? Well, they breathe through eggs, and they've got one, and it appears to be active. Look at this. This destroyer egg has been meticulously placed in a delicate stand on the desk. It radiates intense heat from within, but does not move or stir. I know Primordus is gone, but I think I'll leave this alone. There is this really interesting question of what the fuck is going on with these minions that remain. This Dwarven Machine, and I'm actually happy to say I am nerdy enough to have known what this was before I interacted with it. So tell me, do you guys know, do you recognize this from anything? Because it is in Guild Wars 2. It's the Ember Bay Machine, you know, that you rebuild and st to stop the volcanoes. You know, one of the minor <laughs> catastrophic events that's easy to forget about. Yeah, it says, this looks identical to the machine in Ember Bay that the ancient dwarves used to keep the volcano from erupting. It hums and spins rhythmically, though what purpose it serves here remains unknown. I wonder if Leia re remembers how this works. I wonder how Leia would feel seeing, like, that stone dwarf. I can't remember his name. You know, who's just ahead now. Here's Leia's chair in front of a roaring fireplace, and we get to sit in it. And he's got his tankard of Deljamor ale next to it. We've got his little bed which we could sleep on and possibly clip our head into the pillow no, we, we fall asleep the other way his journal here so people were talking about this in Discord as well that it's kind of weird that you can just read people's personal journals there's especially a moment with Zodja coming up in a second with a lot of that, which is kind of iffy but hey so 11.27 AE Dagda came by my quarters today okay, so 11.27, what year are we in? we need to get a good sense of this so, 1070 is Guild Wars 1. So, 1127. We're about 50 years after Guild Wars 1 here, guys. Uh, I think we're still 50 years before the Sea of Sorrows novel. I think Sea of Sorrows was about 100 years later. Anyway, 50 years after Guild Wars 1. Um, what was going on? 
fragment of Lear's journal. Dagda came by my quarters today in a dandy mood. Asked if I'd like to take a trip down to Tyria proper. Something about an errand for Isgaran? Maybe it's because I haven't been back since the ascension, but it took everything to hide my excitement. This would explain, by the way, why he didn't turn to stone. If he ascended and chose to forget a bunch of stuff about his past life with the dwarves, it's no wonder he wouldn't have gone through the right. I couldn't explain it. So much of my former life is shrouded, just beyond reach. So why am I so giddy? Am I broken? Possessed? I should get checked out before we leave. Interesting. So he still has some longing for who he once was. Our journey began at a large monastery hewn inside a mountain. Towered has the largest library and archive in Tyria. Okay, wait. When was the Dermon Priory founded? Is this the start of the, the, um, the Priory? The, no, the Priory started after Lion's Arch was flooded. And Lion's Arch didn't get flooded till Zaitan awoke. And Zaitan didn't awake that quick, did it? Zaitan wasn't awake within 50 years of Guild Wars 1 ending. There's no fucking way. Maybe this is the original monastery within Lion's Arch. But they're saying it's inside a mountain. Cossage is in chat. Cossage might know. I feel like the timing on this doesn't doesn't count. They don't technically say it's the Priory Library, so maybe not, but I think that's what they're referencing here. No, the Priory, basically Lion's Arch gets flooded, they get as much of the knowledge and books as they can out, and put it up on a mountain, right? And that, essentially that's the start of the Dermond Priory. Dermond is actually in Guild Wars 1, so it can't have been that much later, but I, I thought Zaitan's catastrophe was not 50 years. It was much later than that, I think. Sea of Sorrows lines up with Zaitan Awakening. Yes, exactly. And I think that's a, at least 100 years, isn't it? I could just go to Wiki and look at the timeline, but whatever. Anyway, our journey began at a large monastery hewn inside a mountain. Towered is the largest library and archive in Tyria. Yak crap, I say. We wandered its torch-lit halls, shrouded in our altered forms. Dagda as an Asura, and me simply appearing as stone. In hindsight, had I known we'd run into another scalding dwarf, I think I might have tried something else. I don't think this Ogden bloke knew me, not that I'd know. Fortunately, Dagda got what she came for, and we hightailed out of it. So yeah, he doesn't know Ogden anymore because he's forgotten everything about him. But there's another side of this, which is that, you know, I don't like the world to feel small. So the idea that just the only dwarves that are there know each other, that kind of would annoy me, you know? It feels much more expansive, and there's a certain verisimilitude to the idea that, you know, there's this huge dwarven society, so of course they don't know each other, you know? It's like people assume all British people know each other or live down the street from each other or whatever. It's, it's not true. There's, you know, hundreds of thousands, millions of dwarves out there, potentially. They might not have known each other, and that feels more natural to me, you know? Um, but maybe they did. In fact, if Lear turns out to be a, an, an NPC in Guild Wars 1, I think that would be the coolest shit ever. If that's true, someone has to confirm that for me in chat, because that would be just amazing. Yeah, and they're talking about Ogden as well, so it's got to be the Priory. Okay, Kossage says, Zaitan awoken and caused the tsunami in 1219. The novel was around then. So 1219... Wait, have I missed a digit? No, and here we're only 1127. See, I am right. We're 100 years earlier than that. We're, it's a, Zaitan's 100 years after this is dated. So is this just an... Is this a... Did the devs just mess up the lore a little bit here? Because they're clearly talking about the Dermond Priory. Unless there's another mountain library out there. And Ogden was at that before he was at the Priory. You know what? They should just roll with that and just say, Yeah, look, here you go. Here's a... Here's a I, another library out there and Ogden knows about it and we'll tell you in time I love this comparison to the Priory by the way as well because like my favorite living world patch possibly of all time and I say possibly because there's a lot of different things you can value things on but is that season two one where we go to the primary Priory archives and there were all those books to interact with that was just such an exciting amazing time because there was so much lore that was written about and so much expanded on in the universe and oh my god they, you know they talked about Malik in there they they had everything. It was the coolest shit. And it wasn't just books. You know, there were antiques and artifacts and things you could interact with as well. And the, the atmosphere in there was amazing. And you had the the map of the all above you. And they talked about the apostate. And they had the Abaddon statue with the Easter egg. What a fucking amazing instance. And you know what? This expansion feels just like that. It really does. Like, when I'm doing this here, it's the same kind of feeling I get. 
You know, I was so disappointed. I got a message years after. I did a video where I went through all of that. And years later, I got a message from someone who said, Hey, WP, uh, I just wanted you to know, I interned at ArenaNet, and I wrote all of that lore. I'm not there anymore, but I wrote it all, and I was really happy to see that you you played that and you had fun with that. And, it, you know, it was amazing to meet someone like that and say, oh, that's really, really cool or awesome. I'm glad you liked the video, and I listen, I love the stuff you made. But to realize that it had been written by someone interning who wasn't there anymore, it was like, oh, no, I'm without a paddle again now, you know? Like, ah. Oh. But here we are in 2023, Secrets of the Obscure, and it's all back, baby. It feels so good. Anyway. So, yeah, well, no, not anyway. I want to know, what do you guys think? Is this... Did the devs fuck up? Another intern to save the day moment, just like an intern created the Winter's Day Freezy Strike. I mean, maybe. You know, there's a there's a very real, real life, horrible story there about money. You know, it's like, man, interns like that, people who do such good jobs, clearly passionate fans, you know, you just wish they could all get placements, you know. And that the talent would bubble up instead of just evaporating. I'm I'm reading chat here. Nobody is committing one way or the other. I'm going to say... I'm going to say this. I'm going to say that ArenaNet accidentally messed up the date. And it should... There should be a 2 there. It should be 12.27, not 11.27. Yeah, okay, so... Cossage is saying in Canther, this was the year that Yusoko annexed the Luxons and the Kurzix. Obviously isn't relevant. Because we're talking about Corteria at the moment. Yeah, the Priory did... I think the Priory existed. Or, like, there was a library or there were books, but they were just in Lion's Arch. Wait, if it was that late, though... Dermond was still alive, and Dermond's alive in Guild Wars 1. You think it's in the Desert Highlands, really? Okay, I'll continue reading. So we're in a mountain monastery. Ogden's there. There's a library in the walls, blah, blah, blah. Didn't expect to run into destroyers, but the ruins were crawling with them. Anyway, yeah, so they left now. We, we leave that location. We're in a new location. Didn't expect to run into destroyers, but the ruins were crawling with them. I had to split just to keep them off Dagda as she magically picked the door's quad stone rune lock. Emotion led them away on a wild goose chase while I warded the hallway to the door. A damn shame I didn't get to solve the rune puzzle myself. That's from Logic. And Emotion says, That's what you're upset about, you slag brain nitwit? What about me and my well-being? I was nearly thrown into magma. Yeah, this is clearly now talking about the desert highlands. We've moved now. It's a different place. And they're talking about that, ju that amazing puzzle there. A highlight of POF. After I merged, Dagda and I descended slowly into a chasm of stars. At the bottom was a massive cavern, its walls glittering with the light of precious gems. There we found our prize. Sparks of Delgemore floated across the cavern lake's opalescent waters. Dagda carried out her business as I watched a pair of shimmering cosmic fish circle one another in perfect sync, ebb and flow, just like me. The bottom of the page is torn away. You wonder where the missing piece may be, isn't it? By So they recovered an artifact from that room. So what was down there? That's really cool. See, this is exactly what I mean, okay? That's a cool enigma, a fun mystery. What what was going on in that room at the bottom of the Desert Highlands? What's going on down there? And uh, just to be clear, just for people who are slightly out of the loop, I'm trying to be as inclusive as possible with this so everyone can geek out together. Where the fuck is the Desert Highlands? Here. Well, I'm talking about this jumping puzzle, guys. Remember, you go down, and then there's the dark room filled with the celestial magics, remember? That's what they're writing about here. And apparently, 200 years ago, Lear gathered... took some, The Astral Ward took some... The Wizard's Vault... The Wizard's Vault. The Wizard's Court took something from it. All right, there you go. Wow, we spent a long time on that. There's a food tray here. This food tray contains a loaf of seeded bread and a triangle of pungent cheese. It's been sitting out for some time, and the food is lightly covered with mold. Ugh. I better leave this alone. That was a good little blech I just did there, wasn't it? Very good. I do say so myself. Uh, any more interactables before we take the portal? I, I mean, we can definitely come back here. There are more interactables. There's a scroll here. Strategic Scenario Response Pro Protocol Mosaic Wrath. Okay, so just so that you guys know, we're going to read a lot of documents which essentially express contingency plans for various disasters. And they all have these ridiculously fancy names. Mosaic Wrath 
is the second meta. Okay, so funnily enough, this one we're reading, the first one here, we will actually see Mosaic Wrath be employed in the next map. So anyway, the scenario for this is if there is ever a multi-point rift-based Amnitas incursion, which is... So the second map is Amnitas. So if there are ever rifts attacking Amnitas, then they will do Mosaic Wrath against it. And wow, what a spoiler. There's going to be rifts attacking in the second map. Who would have thought it? So response OP designation Mosaic Wrath. Defensive slash counter-offensive deployment of magically charged sentient amalgamation requiring multiple arrayed summoners in staged coordination. Primary risk factors, magic consumption requires years or decades of siphoning, defenselessness of multiple critical ward members. Comment, too much time and too much magic leaves us vulnerable, and I'd need every ounce of power Lear could muster. Absolute last resort, Dagda. So this is a last resort, and I, I will tell you, that's going to be the matter. And that doesn't give you much of a sense of what the fuck any of that is, does it? But we do... You, do you hear the ritual dance thing? There is dancing involved in the, the meta, so... Right, up we go. Um, you wonder which operation they will use in the future map? Oh, map 3 for Naos. Good question! And that's a fun thing to think about, isn't it? I wonder what... Because they probably do have a uh, contingency written. Oh, I should watch very closely. Maybe there is a contingency and it says... Okay, this contingency is for when we're in the realm of dreams. The second mayor is so crazy stretch. in scale. It is, isn't it? It really is. Alright, there you go, guys. I'm here to save the day. They've been slowly fighting away for however long. Out with you! Out of my chambers! Oh, are these all still his chambers? Lear, I want to ask you about that room. The Desert Highland room. Accelerate. May we discuss? I kind of don't want to stand in that. The Telegraph's a bit iffy, though. Oh, there's the wall spinning. Part of a volcano. So, yeah, I guess I am still missing another achievement. That achievement that was over my hotbar earlier. I just needed to do rifts, did I? A swift stream. I guess that achievement is for... Invigorating doing the stuff before the meta spawns basically, you know maybe there's dialogue in there as well and these eyeballs I don't like this eyeball telegraph because it doesn't this doesn't treat work like eyeballs do in the rest of the game an eyeball should mean look away, but I, I don't know. Did I get the weakness in the cripple there because I didn't look away? It's really hard to tell the timing. I think they properly fucked that up. Rage at maximum. And misused that telegraph. Happy. Very. We've little time to celebrate. Let's join the others. Oh, was it Frode saying get out of my quarters? Are these Frode's quarters? Is that the idea? So yeah, each group is basically clearing out their little place. This must be Dagda's, right? Christ, I mean, a telescope looking at the stars. It's actually looking at a brick wall, but I assume it can magically penetrate that. Oh, of course. No, it is still a blast. It's not a Lapis Blast. This feels so weird in that way. It's a fucking skill that in every way behaves like a leap now but is a blast and the combo the thing that says you get it as a combo triggers at the start like the heart appears at the start but i guess it actually only executes at the end of the animation because the blast is at the end it doesn't blast when i leap there you go so we've regrouped so that's it it's not you know a particularly amazing thing maybe on the other side we would have seen zodja's quarters oh, and the i earned this as is the west Together, we recite the unlit moon. Without Isgarin? Zoja. Me? I, I couldn't. You must. Come. We won't let the flow overwhelm you. I'm sure whatever terrors that still linger in these halls will come crawling the moment we begin. Stand ready, all of you. We sit underneath an unlit moon. Water pools beneath our feet. I like this, this actual spoken incantation. They did it a little bit in End of Dragons as well. I, uh, it 
questions, no Mr. mistakes. Orange Just Strange. flawless execution. We see you. Of Cryptus. A brilliant ember. I try not to talk too much. Oh my fucking god, wow. It's Ganon, interesting to take damage in a personal dust. story instance, I'll tell you that. Holy shit, what was that? Accelerating. Oh, I should have put my field up quicker there. Maximum the combo out of it. Someone out, Eddie. Oh, do you know what? Let's use the Catalyst Elite to like double fire grab or double churning earth or something. That'll be somewhat novel. Should have been doing that for ages, to be honest. What exactly this incantation is or anything? Some of you guys might be wondering, oh, WP, is that lore you know about? No, this is just totally new to me. And I think it's just a part of Cry us feeling like an outsider. Me, siblings of nature. Cry for me and the world I a left brilliant ember. Some new An practice of the Astral Ward. What is going to be the most fun Synergy achievement to double? Beautiful. Right, the Lightning might be quite fun to double. In an out of combat scenario, maybe. I don't know. Mounts are in the game now, who cares? Why double ride the lightning when you can just do one like, Raptor Leap? Armor enhanced. Probably should have Earthquaked as well, to be honest. Use the four and the five. You see the big Primordus explosion from the... And that's because I have the Primordus hammer in my offhand. And even though I'm an Ellie, I never weapon swap to that in combat or ever use it. You do get the on-kill effect on your main hand, right? Here I have Incinerator and uh, the Volcanic Warhorn. Uh, well, uh, uh, volcanic Dagger. To the thousand bowls of tears in the hall. We need to take care of that thing. <laughs> There's the power. Oh, I'll tell you what, if I was using Warhorn, I could double Warhorn uh, 4. A swirling gust. Uh, sorry, double Warhorn 5. Jesus, what's. It could be warmed up at this point. know what I want to prioritize in water either. A quick little water three for a blast in some field that I've got up is fine. But then do I want to auto or use the two? I think I want to use the two. Even just for damage. Is there a hint of what Zodger's power will be? Well, we haven't got anywhere near that in the story yet, so. Zoja! Are you okay? You did so well, little one. There you go. I, I, I saw... Wh what was that? It could have been a thousand things. We tapped into Tyria itself. That burn was the world looking back. That's a lot to process. I have no idea what they're getting out yeah. with that, by the way. Let us enter the Hall of Confluence. What does tapping into Tyria itself mean? Isn't that what Aurene is essentially doing, monitoring There's all the magic? <sighs> I don't know how much longer I can resist them. The whispers are... eager. My dear friends, don't fret. We have survived the Elder Dragons, rogue gods. This world doesn't comprehend how resilient it is. Here you go. Cryptus won't be our end. They are vulnerable, ignorant. I only ask one thing of you. When the hour arrives, do not hesitate. Uh, the the Cryptus there, more meta commentary. The Cryptus being MMO community. Even for you. I suppose some Marsat habits lasted beyond my ascension. I can hear Iskaran. He's out there, somewhere, struggling. I need to go to him. We will meet soon. Be safe, my friend. We need to repair the Astral Translocator. We can't power our portal infrastructure without it. Our true home rests in the clouds above. 
Once our portals can access the flow again, we'll take you to the Bastions. There are six Bastion Keep keys. Them out of trouble. The Astral Ward was able to hide as some of them from the Cryptus, so. but they're not all accounted for. I need eyes everywhere until we've located them all. Check in with the others. The Hall of Confluence is a mess. We should tend to whatever needs doing before we depart. So they write Mabon out here, um, real quick. I think they're very sloppy about it, to be honest. Very flimsy, because essentially... <laughs> they don't want us to spend too much time with them, I guess. I don't know. Um, and obviously some, some stuff will happen later in the story where it kind of explains why they wouldn't want him wandering around the Wizard's Tower, the Arborstone edition of it. But, I mean, they can phase stuff like that. I just, I think him just saying, oh, I'm going to go to this guy and buy, and nobody questions him. Surely people would be like, wait, what the fuck? You know where he is? Where are you going? What are you doing? But nobody questions it. He just leaves. Uh, I think that's a little bit, you know, <laughs> a little bit quick, maybe. Let's say that. Especially considering we can see that he's in the process of becoming possessed. You know, we just saw the glow around his eyes. Um, okay, yeah, there's a lot happening here now. So optional, ask allies if they have any other tasks. Let's do Archik. Urchik. Do you need any help, Urchik? Oh, oh my! <clears throat> if the commander is, this emo. is I love this emote so much. Urchik needs to collect all of the misplaced artifacts. Could you come with Scrit to find them? Anything you need. <laughs> oh, weird! I was just thinking, it wouldn't it be cool if I sat whenever I spoke to NPCs. That would be cool to do. So I just hit my chair hotkey, and it's this, which is the worst chair possible. But did you see how our animation bugged? She, like, rolled right back on the log. Let's pick a better chair. Uh, novelties. Chairs. It's actually a lot of chairs I don't have anymore. We don't have this one. This one. It's a shame I don't get to see my character preview. This one. This one. This. Oh, the tortoise. The hammock's very new, I think. I mean, what are we going to look like in the hammock? A volcanic throne. The vermilion throne. The Oni Lord. That is from the new fractal. Stormlord throne. Holy shit, what is that from? That's like some Ergo's Warren shit. That looks so cool. The throne of shadows. Dwainers. The jade. The comfy cat one. Lots of people know that one. The miner's rig, the jade tech chair, and then the street noodles one is also very new. This is what we got from the, the story. Legionnaire. Oh, the illusion of sitting. Just a, a zero chair. I don't even know where I got that from. I could... Oh, we could rest on our sky scale. That's very in, in keeping with the expansion. I look like I'm a bit lazy, though, if I'm doing that. But yeah, let's do this. Hello, Frode. Still got Cryptus crawling out of every cupboard. They're drawn to whatever pot of magic they can find. And we happen to be drowning in magical conduits. I've asked the wizards time and time again to keep our more powerful objects in a safer location. If you see any more, get rid of them. Oh, Liz didn't respond. I wanted the pleasure of her responding. Okay. Uh, like, for example, that one over there. Oh, damn it. Oh, he's actually following us now that we're doing this. Let's see what Zodja wants. And there's some journals around here and a little library. The crypt has completely destroyed my workstation. Oh, what a mess. <sighs> if you see any books or pages while you're looking around, can you bring them back to me? Navigational charts mostly, but uh, also some personal stuff. So no reading, okay? But we do read. Damn it, Liz. Respond to these nice people. So right, there's some journals here. Let's read these while we're here. Well, you know, she... Okay, Zoja, let's back it up. Wayno and I decided to stay in the Citadel for a few nights after we cleaned... So remember the story here is that she goes wandering away. She's lost hope in Ratasum and so on. Um, and she meets this Asura who's going to take her to the Astral Ward, basically. Uh, we stay in the Citadel for a few nights after we clean shop in the Southern Shiver Peaks. I don't know what they were doing there. Ritlock is with the others in Am Noon. So this is what Zodja's doing during POF. 
Uh, we're locked with the others in Amnoon, apparently, so no chance of crossing paths. Wayno told me that she needed to meet with another friend, which was starting to feel a bit suspect at, at every other village, so I followed her. Maybe an invasion of privacy, but I don't know how to feel about what happened yet. So they met just outside of Smokestead, which is a real place in game DS, I think. Uh, he looked human from a distance, but suddenly I felt a pinch behind my left ear and sick to my stomach. That's a nice little, like, Asuran adage there, the pinch behind her left ear. Whatever spell he was using to conceal his identity was strong. The briefest flash of light, and then a Massart. A living Massart. I'd, I'd heard about what happened with Lazarus from a packed engineer in Lion's Arch, but here, I was ready to attack when he noticed my position. I tried to run, but my legs went numb. Wano urged me to remain calm and went straight into Electron personal security. I don't know if it was for me or for her. The Massart hovered nearby and watched. Was he anxious? He gently put a hand on her shoulder and pushed her aside. He knelt by me and mumbled something I couldn't make out. It didn't sound like any native tongue I'm familiar with. I could feel my legs again though. My weapon was just out of reach but his voice was kind. He gave me his name and assured me my safety. He already knew who I was and he seemed honoured to meet me. So that's Mabon, who'd obviously, I guess, read about the uh, adventures of Destiny's Edge and so on. It's interesting. I like that the writers give us a sense of exactly what Zodja was doing during POF or exactly what she's doing at this point in the timeline and stuff. I think it's really good that they give us a concrete answer to that. On the other hand, though, I, I, I wish there was a little bit in this that was like Zodja... Been like, oh yeah, yeah, all my friends, they're all fighting, they're risking their lives to fight a fucking god that's threatening the world. Um, you know, can we get at least a tiny little sense that she understands the severity of what she's just, and she's just poodling around, you know, like try on a quest to find herself during that time. Like, it's, it's, it's big shit that she's missing now. And I think there are many reasons for why... She, you know, maybe she feels guilty. Now, now maybe it's been so long. She feels guilty. She feels like an outsider. She thinks it would be awkward to just show up. Blah, blah, blah. You know, there's any number of reasons they can write, but just write one of them. Actually put one of them in there. You know, but because they don't put anything in here, it's like Zodja doesn't give a fuck, you know? By the way, uh, speaking of Balthazar and the gods, I think something really cool is happening with the writing now. Now that we're out of the Elder Dragon story, okay, the devs can talk about the Balthazar incident with a lot more severity than they could before. See, like, when you're telling people about the end of the world and the void, or when you're fighting Krakatoric, or when we're fighting Dromag, or when we're fighting Primordus, you know, when all that shit's going on, it would it kind of sucks away from the stakes to say, oh, by the way, Balthazar was worse. Balthazar was every bit as bad as all this shit, by the way. The gods are amazing. It was every bit as bad. You kind of don't want to do that because you don't want to detract from the stakes of the here and now. But now that we're not dealing with the Elder Dragons anymore, you'll notice the story is much happier to prop Balthazar up as an equivalent issue. And I think, again, I think it's because the devs are gearing up for more stuff about the gods and they want to talk about the gods being these serious big things again. So, like, in that cutscene just now, you see how they're, like... Mabon was like, oh, Tyria has defeated the Elder Dragons and the Balthazar thing, by the way. He talks about them like they're equivalents. For years, during the Elder Dragon crisis, from a narrative, from a structural perspective, I think the writers don't really want to talk about it as an equivalent. But now they can do that. They have that leeway and that will be in service of looking at the other gods later. I, and I like that. I really like that they keep mentioning Balthazar. They do it a lot of times in the expansion. They've done it before this scene and they've just done it again and they'll do it again in the future. There's a letter here. Dagda, I must be swift. Swift. Should is Garen catch on to my plan before I'm able to depart? I've decided... Oh, okay. So, look, guys. This is from S. Who I think... I don't know. Let's read it. I think... Oh, yeah, no. Signed Waiting Sorrow. Yeah, it says at the top. This is Waiting Sorrow. Big mystery character. Let's see. Dagda. I must be swift. Should is Garen catch on to my plan before I'm able to depart? I've decided to leave this place. I've been here for a thousand years too long, I think. My mind hurts and it yearns for beings that know all I don't know enough, not about myself. Something bubbles beneath my flesh, swirling in the back of my mind that I can't quite reach. It crawls and bites. Very much sounds like a demon kind of situation, right? But I, is Waiting Sorrow possessed? Corrupted? Is the twist that Waiting Sorrow is Pather or something? I don't know. Because we don't know where Waiting Sorrow is now. Also, by the way, for beings that know all, I assume that they're talking about the wizards. 
But maybe not. Maybe that's a reference to Waiting Sorrow's own race. But I'm pretty sure Waiting Sorrow's a Coden. And I wouldn't think that the Coden know all. The Coden do consider themselves to be superior and to be arbiters of balance. And they are they do judge these things. But if Waiting Sorrow ascended and lost their memories, then all that goes away. So I don't know. I think that this... And just because the Coden feel that about themselves doesn't mean they also believe themselves to be omnipotent. I mean, it, it is extremely arrogant and somewhat suggestive that the Coden outlook is one where they think they know everything. But, I mean, that's not necessarily true. And I don't... You know, when you interact with the Coden, they're not sitting there talking about how they know everything. They're just unflinching in the fact they believe they are qualified to judge everything. Anyway, um, yeah, I think it just means the wizards. Obviously, you can go way off in a rabbit hole here and be like, well, what about other crazy races that maybe knew a lot of stuff? I don't know. I don't know. I still think Waiting Sorrow is a Coden. Last time is Garen heard of my reservations. He asked if I wanted to die. It wasn't a hostile remark, but I reject the notion that there isn't a path forwards that doesn't involve moving to the next wave of existence. So, I depart. It's interesting that these very learned, knowledgeable people are perfectly happy to die and experience something else in the mists, you know. I have no... I, and this is kind of a tricky thing to write as well, because Tyria is a weird place, because death is not the end. And when these creatures understand that. I love, uh, I love no more other than I love you, my sister. You're the closest thing to a soulmate I need. But I've seen the cards, and I know that you will find another. Just be patient. Find comfort in the fact that we are channeling the same stars as... So, this kind of suggests that Waiting Sorrow is a Jotun. Doesn't it? Very old. I mean, why is the name Waiting Sorrow as well? There's got to be some meaning in that. And it, it strikes me as a very sad character, doesn't it? I mean, Jesus, it's a miserable character. Some great burden of knowledge or whatever on them. I guess loved Dagda. See, I would love to go to Dagda now and just grill Dagda all about waiting. Sorry, but Dagda's like the one character that's a bit of a, you know, a bit standoffish to us, so we can't necessarily do that. There's another question with this, which is why has Zodja got this information now? Also, I think it's interesting. Why is it tagged dash S like this? Because Sorrow is the second name? So, E, all these years, could that have been loving embrace, you know, E? You know, maybe E is a Coden or whatever, the same species as Waiting Sorrow. And E is just the first letter of their second name. Because I'm, I'm, just, I'm just putting it out there. I'm, like, almost 100% sure that E is a member of the Wizards Court at this point. I mean, and I don't know whether there's E information in this expansion, just by the way. I really don't. I'm in the dark. I kind of want to stay in the dark, so don't don't type away too quickly there in the live chat. But um, I feel like E has to be a part of the court. And if it ends up that he's not and he really is just a Crichton, just an invested Crichton, punching well above his weight maybe or something, I think that's also really cool as a response now too. But yeah, okay, let's speak to Dagda. We're cut off from our home until we can reconnect the tower to our portal network. How goes your efforts to repair the Astral Translocator? Okay, just to be clear, she prowled out a ton of fucking information a second ago while Mabon was leaving. And here's what she said. She said that this thing here is the Astral Translocator, this, this portal that we saw in the trailers and so on. That's called an Astral Translocator. And I was kind of under the impression the Wizard's Tower was their home. But she's saying their home, and they referenced this earlier in the expansion as well. And I'm, I'm going over this and slowing down a bit because the, the expansion moves so quick, it's really easy to sort of slip on the details, I guess. Their home is above this. It's like super high in the sky. Now on the world map, you can see that the next map is north. The idea, I think, is that it's like up as well, like way fucking up. In fact, if the engine could have done it, I almost feel like they might have liked to have layered the two maps together. But then, obviously, it makes the expansion look small because there's not enough territory covered or whatever. But anyway, look, their home, Amitas, it's a way up there. And the Wizard's Tower can get them there. The Wizard's Tower has moved near Amitas, just like the Beacon of Hope has... Of, uh, sorry, the Beacon of Aegis has moved near there. 
So a lot of stuff's come to this area because they're homes above the, the Horn of the Maguma. So, yeah, we got to repair it. Our true home rests in the clouds above. Once our portals can access the flow again, we can take you there. And unfortunately, when you go to the map, though, you can still see the ocean really nearby the bottom, and it doesn't really feel like we're on the edge of the atmosphere like I wanted. You know, if you guys watch me play Azeric on my Azeric series, there's this world tree there, and at the top of the tree, there's, like, this, like, artificial dome, like, right on the edge of the atmosphere, and you can tell you're, like, shielded from out of space, essentially, by, like, this magical force field. It's a really cool sense. There, you feel like you're on the edge of orbit. There, you see the curvature of the planet out on the horizon. You feel like you're really high up. That's what I wanted from Amatas, map two. And they don't give you it. It just feels just like the first map, really. And I was really disappointed by that. Anyway, we're cut off. I could use your help finding the keys. Do you have anything that could help? Isgarin has safeguards in place. If the tower is compromised, the keys magically return to the safe place in the tower. The locations are mentioned in this book. Divine biomes. Would you like it? Sure, I could use the help. Divine biomes. When we first begin to ask ourselves about the grand mysteries of the astral planes, we recognize with immediacy that we are no longer speaking about the physical world. Although to the denizens of these biomes, they are as natural. Now this is in bold. Basically, each of these is where one of the keys has gone to the natural, the obscure, the celestial balance. Strength and knowledge. These are e Each of these is a bastion. You know there was the bastion of the penitent? There is a bastion of the natural, of the obscure, of the celestial, of the balance, and we'll see those in map two. We're no longer speaking about the physical world. They are as natural as the great strands of trees that lie in the heart of the forest as are to us. The key distinction between the biomes of the astral world and those of our own mundane one can oft times be obscure and flummox even the most logical of minds. We can compare it to the act of seeing a world behind the one we know, as though it's hiding from those who seek to ascend to new heights. To truly understand the subject at hand, we must recognize our place in the great cosmic order first. If we hope to find our place in the celestial order, we must begin at the bottom, like the firm foundation of a great tower stretching skyward. Our next goal then should be to seek balance, so that as we expand our mind and our wisdom to accept more of the world beyond our own, we always have a place to center ourselves physically and mentally. We should plant ourselves in the place in which one can see both perspectives equally. It's interesting this and then thinking about Lear's splitting potential and stuff. We also need to attain an investiture of strength to stand firm against the many forces which would align against such efforts. Looking to those who have led the way to guide our steps, there are those who have become paragons of their kind, and from them we can learn how to be resolute. Which is might explain why they followed the, the acts of Destiny's Edge and the Commander and stuff. Finally, as it is ultimately knowledge that we seek, we must immerse ourselves in the guiding words of those who have come before us. The wit and wisdom of our forebears travel through time from the past, captured in ink and on the page, to our present moment. I love this last bit. Because I was reading something a while ago about, or was I watching a documentary about how, like, the written word affected so much of humanity and what we learn and how our culture develops and technology and stuff because otherwise things would just straight up lost you know if you can't preserve information and it's such a basic thing to us nowadays that you don't really think about what it's like when that goes away anyway divine biomes and that's how you know we're so similar anthropologically speaking to humans so long ago yet we're so different now it's essentially that preservation of information okay uh before i get too rambly let's just go Let's hit some of these extra enemies for Frode. Oh, he's hiding behind that plant. I was like, what? Why have I just tracked into the plant with that skill 3? It's auto-targeting helping me out there a little bit. Accelerating. So, in here, this looks like Dag... Does there... No, maybe not. I don't know. Navigational chart. So we pick this up. It doesn't give us any lore. It's just one of the bonus tasks, I guess, for people. A thousand storms. Look at these. I love these things. I really hope map three. Uh, okay, w one thing that you're going to find. You guys know how this expansion started uh, with us in Naos for a second. Okay, I'm just going to burst the bubble for a second here. In this entire expansion, that's the only room that they've made for Naos. It looks amazing. It's really cool, and it gives me a really good sense of the realm. 
But that is it. It is the one room for the whole expansion. So, well, and I guess maybe the, like, fallen building place we were in. But so, what I'm saying is, if the next map, map three, is set there, I hope that they really go big with it and it feels super new and exciting. What I think would be incredibly good for ArenaNet to pull off is that they they prove these quarterly patches are awesome by really going as big as they can on like that map. Because people are going to be wondering, is this going to be Giala Delve quality, right? And if it turns out the best map of the Secrets of the Obscure expansion was the one from a quarterly, in terms of feeling different and feeling like a new adventure and stuff, if the best one ended up as that one, I think that would do a lot for people to... Um, you know, come around to this new thing where essentially we're being sold living world, blah, 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 blah. Um, so hopefully, you know, we've seen the one room and the fact there's only one room might mean that they're, they're a bit stretched and they can't do too much. But that's what I think when I see like those red tendril things, you know. Um, there should be an enemy here, I guess above us, maybe below us. There's an astral globe. This globe shows a series of constellations and has a glowing hole around which are four smaller nodes. The nodes appear as though they can be interacted with. Touch the first one. It does nothing. Touch the second one. It does nothing. Touch the third one. It does nothing. Touch the fourth one. It does nothing. So maybe we need to touch them in a certain order. I don't know. Anyone got any advice for me on that one? There's some mysterious energy here. Mysterious energy crackles over a symbol affixed to the tower. A constellation of glowing orbs hovers within the energy. The orbs look like the constellation on the globe. Hmm. Is it these, maybe? Oh yeah, we're moving the wall. Oh, I remember. I think Kerry did this. We're moving the wall. This is a cool puzzle. So what does that do? That just toggles up and down. So what do I want to do? Line them all up? They all have two states. What's this described as? A constellation hovers within the energy. So what pattern would I want to make? What picture would I want to draw? Do I want to do a square? Like there's a square there maybe? Do I want to get them all to the right? Let me just see if... No, okay, they all seem to just have two states, and the two states aren't entangled with the other states. The fact that I can move those two like that seems somewhat... Maybe I just want to line them all up. We need, we need a reference material. I don't want to accidentally beat it. What does Dagda's diary say here? Some days I can tolerate Isgaran's mental games, and others I cannot. Ever since Sorrow's sudden departure, my patient I tried to say the word disappearance and departure at the same time there. My patience with him has lessened. I can't help but think that he pushed her away from us, but I must remind myself to breathe. Lear's presence has been a boon on this front. He's always there to cool my ever-boiling blood. After all, I'm now leader of this place. I need to, per, I need to, per Lear's encouragement, behave. What's the per there? Oh, I see. I need to, per his encouragement, behave. I get you. Um, so, hold on. Waiting Sorrow led this beacon, right? The Wizard's Tower? But I thought is Garen did. So, was Waiting Sorrow always right next to Garenhoff all that time? Or is, is she referring to a different place? No, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Some of the new recruits are unsettled by our appearances. Lear usually gets a delighted response, given that he isn't made of stone, but Isgar and Mabon and I are usually met with fear. Yeah, because that's a seer, a Masat, and an ancient Jotun. <laughs> None of which would fill, fill anyone with, you know, particular happiness. Mabon would get the most fear, for sure. You can imagine, M Mabon's a really great character, full of virtue, you know, because he's a Massar. And I know he has the luxury of having forgotten what he and his people did, but he would be getting these horrible responses for all this time. And yet he still believes in people, and, you know, like we saw in the meta just now, the dialogue in the meta, it talked about how, uh, you know, has he grown sentimental and stuff. Um, some of the new recruits are unsettled. 
Mabon chose to hide his... Here, here's this detail. So the whole way through the X-Pack, I was looking at the fact he didn't have the wings, thinking it was like a visual bug. Really. It says, Mabon uh, chose to hide his wings to lessen the dire presence of a Masat. And his Garan has taken on a blue complexion, hoping that he may be mistaken for a Jin. But I, why is it that the presence of a Jotun and a woman at that is so shocking? I realise my people are different now than they were when I was rescued those many years ago. But for Isgarin to ask me to hide myself, to change myself? No. I could have killed him on the spot, but I knew I'd be dead before the thought finished, or worse. Days like today make me want to drop everything and find her. Waiting sorrow. I should be angry, but she was always a warm voice in the swirling, terrifying expanse of the cosmos. I realised that she broke about just about every rule in the book by leaving with her powers intact. But I will always wonder why, and I will always mi miss her. What a cool mystery this is, right? What powers does Waiting Sorrow have? And she made this artifact that we're fucking carrying around. Waiting Sorrow is like the mystery of this expansion. She made this artifact and nobody knows what the fuck- and oh, it's so good. By the way, I kind of don't like Dagda at all here. She's so fucking stupid, man. The Jotun are murderous, savage, bloodthirsty brutes that prey on traveling caravans, kill anyone in the mountains that happens to venture into the slight wrong place. They are terrifying. Actually, I said that Mabon would get the most fear. No, she probably would. But actually, she doesn't even look that much like the other Jotun. But, you know, people understand Jotun are fucking bad, mindless killing brutes. And yeah, you're that race. They're associating you with that. So, and she has absolutely no sympathy or understanding or perspective for that, for these people. So I kind of get the idea of, like, glamouring themselves, at least not to draw too much suspicion and attraction, but she acts like, oh, that's so offensive, fuck off. Be pragmatic for a second. So it annoys me a bit, but there you go. I like this thing here as well, the warm voice in the swirling, terrifying expanse of the cosmos, because... I get the impression of her interacting a lot with the stars and the greater realms and the astral planes and stuff as a joke and using her telescopes and so on. And yeah, maybe maybe Waiting Sorrow had a lot of impact for that too. I will always wonder why. I will always miss her. Ah, oh, I want to find out why. I guess we will, right? We get three more story patches to really dig into that. Okay, that did not help us with this mystery though. Oh yeah, oh, and they also use that to explain why Isgaran looks a little bit different, I guess. Instead of like the grey chromatic kind of alien vibe from Guild Wars 1, they've gone with this blue thing. And to be honest, he does look a lot like a djinn. <laughs> uh, and they've kind of justified it here. I wish that they'd gone closer to the Guild Wars 1 appearance. Usually I don't care. I, I don't care about them keeping to the old appearance. But I think that would have helped with my nostalgia, and I also would have helped him to feel different to the Jin, because i got to be honest, guys, minor spoiler, we will meet Isgaran in this expansion, okay? Um, i got to be honest, in all the scenes around Isgaran, I kept accidentally calling him Zomoros. He's just got such a Zomoros vibe, like his his voice is a bit like Zomoros, he moves around like Zomoros, I just, it's, and then, you know, I wish that wasn't the case, you know, but there you have it. Okay, so... just as a constellation of orbs. Oh, there is. Ah, look. On the back. Am I supposed to? This is very hard to get my camera on that. Am I supposed to be looking at the back? There's more nodes there than, though, than I have access to. Up, down. There's way more nodes. Oh, what about this one on the front? But low down. That's four nodes. Can you move out of the way, please, Frode? Thank you. I think it's probably this. So we want to make a triangle with that on the bottom right. So that... Number four is set up correctly. Yeah. Number four is correct. Number two needs... No, number... Yeah, one... There you go. That's it. Did we get it done? Yeah, we did. Nice. Okay, and now we need to take this back. There you go. If I kept fiddling there, I might have accidentally finished it. But look, we figured it out. Um, how do we get back? Don't we want to go upstairs? And Don't we want to be fighting a monster? Oh. I swear to God I used my sky scale button there. I swear to God I did. I have no idea how the Springer came out. I guess because I did W to move forwards a little bit too early. 
Where is this enemy near us? Beautiful blue sky up there. Let's come down. Maybe in the fucked up lower rooms. Okay, this is... Here we go. This is Leah's room anyway. So we've already interacted with all this stuff. There's the power. Except that crumpled paper. That crumpled paper is new. Another scenario. Strategic scenario response proposal. Hapless ladder. So this is in the scenario where the enemies completely occupy Amnitas. The hapless ladder. Sacrificial ambush stratagem in which enemies are allowed to occupy Amnitas via a staged surrender. Once occupied, all structures are scuttled on the surface of Tyria. Primary risk factor results in the complete destruction of Amnitas, the Astral Ward, and the Tyrian Impact Zone. Comment, no. And who comes up with these names? Gareth. <laughs> I like Gareth. Yeah, Gareth will be, you know, he's in events and he comments on all of these. Yeah, so this is fun. This is the idea that they just throw everything down in the water below. It's funny because the map kind of suggests that there's like, you know... Oh, no, those would just be the floating islands. Wouldn't they? They'd just be more floating islands. Yeah, I assume it's just water down there. But tidal wave... But then this is all destroyed, Maguma, anyway. Except there's probably fucking Silvari living here, let's be real. That's almost definitely another grove. Just thrown it out there. So there you go. That's crumpled paper. It looks like they crumpled it up and maybe tried to throw it in the fire, but missed. That's, th that's the idea I'm getting from that. <laughs> and they refuse to scuttle the whole place. And as interesting as that would be to see in a patch, I, I think we probably won't see that. Because then how do you explain going back to the map later? I know there's the whole map frozen in time thing, but... Rage at maximum. There's the power. Okay, kill another craven. Let's see what's in here. There's a misplaced artifact chest here. Which we can open. Now, if I didn't have the mastery yet... Would that have worked out? Another navigational chart. That's good. Oh, I should have actually looked at the model. That looked like a real map. There's a journal here I don't remember seeing before. Maybe this is one of Zodja's journals. Ratasoom just isn't the same. I've been out of the infirmary for two months and nothing feels anywhere close to normal. The council was too scared to put me back on field work and the colleagues seem less interested in having me teach. No talks, nothing. Past my prime, apparently. Send me straight to the retirement facility. See, I just don't buy this. I'm sorry, I don't believe this. That they all give her the cold shoulder in instantly just because she's been in an infirmary for two months after heroically contributing to the defeat of an elder dragon. I just don't buy it. I'm sorry, it's not enough time. Anyway, I can't, maybe it's all in her head. I can't even work on Mr. Sparkles. He's scattered in... So you might have been wondering where Mr. Sparkles is through all this as well. And there are answers to that in this expansion. I can't even work on Mr. Sparkles. He's scattered in pieces all over Maguma. I think I am too. Time he's come and gone. Managed to dodge her each time at least. But I guess she's somewhere down in the Ring of Fire with the Commander. Heh. <laughs> Bet she's having a blast. A part of me wreathes with je writhes with je jealousy. Perhaps anxiety? I'm eager to get back out there. But the lingering fear at the end of those thoughts keeps me in place. I used to be, a str I used to be stronger than this. But maybe I never noticed my expiration day. I don't know, I just, I find it a really fucking hard pill to swallow that for all these years, alright, it's not a couple of weeks or months, years, fucking years and years, okay, no, I'm, I'm ranting here and this isn't true, maybe it is only a period of a couple of months, because eventually she did join these guys, and then she did have a reason for being away, but I mean, Jesus, the Ember Bay stuff, the Path of Fire stuff, that's a good period after the Blighting Pod incident, and that whole time, she's just... Oh, I really want to join them, but I didn't, I guess. I don't know. I, f I think... I, I feel like they shouldn't have emphasized this. I would have just had her be taken up by the ward a lot earlier. You know, it's explanation enough that she got sought out and she went up with them and she sworn to secrecy for a while. And that was explanation enough to me. And I, some of this I don't fully buy, you know. It's sort of half there. Like, it's a Bible idea, but I don't know whether it's an earned idea. Let me Let me try and phrase it that way. But, you know, sometimes I feel like it does work with the Zodja thing, so, you know. Anyway, that journal I guess we can click before. I really want to drop this chart off, so I'm going to do that. And then we'll try and return to this area before I go into all these magical, amazing rooms. Like that one filled with all the greenery. Let's just hope we pick a direct path free of a ton of other interactables. 
So this one, I mean, do they have to go into specific things? Although this disc is the correct size and shape, the symbol on the surface does not appear to match. This is cool. I like this. This reminds me of the puzzle in POF when you go to the mist, you know, right, right before the library scene. There you go, Bastion of the Celestial. And so, check it out, guys. What is that symbol? Do you remember the pre-release speculation we did where a symbol corresponds to a location that the portal can take you to, blah, 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 blah? Well, here's our answer. This is actually what this means. So there you go. So we've, we've reconnected one of the Bastions now. We just need to reconnect some others. There's a journal over there I'm going to go and read. Okay, Jock's Forge. This is a missing fragment of Lear's journal. Jock's Forge. I watched my Norn friend as she stood at the water's edge, holding some doodad I've never seen before. Her eyes glowed and she began to recite some unfamiliar incantation. With a flick of her finger, she inserted the spark into the device. And only for a few moments, the world around me was changed. The forge was there. My people were there. It was snowing. I saw a dwarf standing before me. Hands offering something. I rubbed my eyes to wake up and the vision was gone. My hands were wet. I was crying? The white spark had transmuted into a silvery mercurial form, trapped in a small prismed capsule. Dagda turned to me with a smile and beckoned our return to the Beacon of Ages. I wanted to ask her about what she'd done and for what purpose, but I wasn't about to stick my nose in elder wizard business. They'll tell me when the time's right, I'm sure. I have no fucking idea what this is about. So hold on, the Norn friend is Dagda. So she was glamoured as a Norn for a while, I guess, or she just looks Norn enough. They go to Drock's Forge... Her eyes glow. Doesn't that sound like demon possession? I guess it's not, though. She began to recite an unfamiliar incantation. Oh, I know what it was. This is him losing his memory. Maybe? Or she gave him a glimpse of an old memory again? This doodad is a men in black device that wiped his memory, maybe. This is the missing page from Lear's journal when they investigated the Dwarf Fortress and the Celestial Pool. Oh! You're right! This is the- this is the end of that journal! Okay, so hold on, in the other journal, they go below the Desert Highlands. And now let's reread it? Wait, and he was there with Dagda. I watched my Norn friend as she stood at the water's edge. This is the Celestial Waters at the bottom. Holding some doodad I've never seen before. So again, she's a Jotun. She gets the astral planes and celestial. Celestial magic is her thing. And she's in this celestial room. She has some doodad. Her eyes glow and she begins to recite some unfamiliar incantation. With a flick of her finger, she inserted the spark. What's the spark? Into the device. And only for a mo few moments, the world around me changed. The forge was there. My people were there. It was snowing. I saw a dwarf standing before me, hands offering something. Someone from his past life, maybe? I rubbed my eyes to wake up. The vision was gone. I was crying. Was it perhaps his wife or child or mother or father? Someone that he cares deeply about. The white spark had transmuted into a silvery mercurial form, trapped in a small prismed capsule. Dagda turned to me with a smile and beckoned our return to the Beacon of the Ages. I wanted to ask her about what she'd done and for what purpose, but I wasn't about to stick my nose in Elder Wizard business. They'll tell me when the time's right, I'm sure. What the fuck is this capsule, then? What is this? This is really cool. Uh, okay, just if anyone knows, I assume Cossage does. Anyone in chat, does that story get elaborated on more in more of the extra dialogue and documents and things? Reminds you of the, the Kaith Seeds? Yeah, a little bit like that, right? That's really fascinating. Wow. Okay, let's go to the grassy room now. Still not sure what this was. What was this again? The spark was what they got in the cave. It's reminding me of those white orbs in that cave. Right, yeah. And they she basically found a way to harness the energy of that room. And then she took it with her back here. Maybe she uses it to power her telescopes or something? Maybe? Up 
port that Paul found in. You know, as someone who get decorates guild halls a lot, I look at this fountain. I'm like, yeah, I like this fountain too. I'd put this in my <laughs> in my wizard's tower. <laughs> um, oh, I wonder actually, did this expansion have many new decorations? Does anybody know that? There's the power. An ancient mountain. It's funny. Uh, Armor I kind hits. of have the assumption now everyone knows everything about the X-Pack except me. I'm sure that's not true, but that's the vibe you get. You know, when you make content online, people are always helping out. People are always offering the information they know. So you get the hive mind, and it, uh, it makes me feel like everyone knows everything. It's funny. I feel like the expansion has been out for ages, but it's weird. Just last night, YouTube recommended me the release trailer for this, this Secrets of the Obscure, and it only said, you know, like six days old, the release trailer. And I was like, man, you know, it is still fucking new, to be fair. Okay, we can we can put this out now. Flames envelop the tree. It's actually burning us to stand near it. Within them appears to be mysterious energy. The blistering heat prevents me from getting a closer look. So we need some water or something, if I remember rightly, to pour on that one. Uh, another navigation. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What is the map of? I honestly thought it was just going to be a generic Tyrian map, but no. What is it of? There's some arrows. Oh my god. Do you know what, guys? That actually, that is New Crichton, and you probably, if you data mine that out, let me see. Where's my camera? Enable first person camera. Oh, it's tricky though. It is tricky. But I'm telling you, that was real text. Sorry, the incinerator effect. That was real text at some point. You might be able to put that through a high contrast filter. And translate that. Like that word there is definitely the in New Crying. Definitely. These are just lines. Wait, is this a pack symbol or a wizard's tower thing? I've definitely seen this before. What symbol is that of? Is that just a packed map? Isn't this the same symbol as one of the rooms on Ember Bay? Maybe. I don't know. I can't remember. That's not the pack symbol, is it? There's grapevines here. Ah, oh, here we go. Here's the water bucket. So let's just grab that for a second. We need magic water to put out magic fire, okay? Those are the rules. Don't anybody care about the rules! All right, there we go. Accelerating. Well, you took the chart. Read it to us in a Uh It says we need to go here to do this, and then here to do this, and then the assault is complete. There you go. That's how we navigate. Why is there not a room to the left? Oh, no, because I'm already on the left. All right, hold on. I'm going to drop this and kill this, because... It doesn't look like there's anything else here, so. An ancient mountain. An ancient mountain. Okay, this. Thank you. So we got that from. I don't know. I don't know what slot it's going to go in. I think there's probably a way to tell which slot things go in, but. I rather just spam around so I can find out. All right, what's going on here? Why, why are we? Oh god, we're in like the regular area with all the other NPCs. A hugely important NPC was right next to us just there. I think this portal will take us in the deeper room. Who is that NPC there, guys? Just from the silhouette. Oh, I moused over it and ruined it. I have a bone to pick with that as well, by the way. No. 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 Better keep looking. No. Well, then it's got to be this one. The very last one. Good job. Okay. Can I speak to you about some of the stuff? Wayfinder, I hope that the book I lent you has been helpful. Please bring those keys back here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hanging in there? There's something about being in this place that makes me uneasy. The cryptus have that effect, it seems. Why didn't Isgarin help protect us from the dragons? <laughs> he was watching this whole time. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, why? When was the last time you helped save a local farm from a group of bandits? Would you save them if, say, the champion of a dragon slept nearby? 
Would you go kill that instead? Isgarin is a complicated fella. And that's not to excuse his poor choices. He's far from perfect. When he has a goal, he stays focused. And he's had the same one for... a while. Keeping Epark away? Aye. Something happened between the two of them back in the era of magic. Before the gods came. He's been so focused on keeping the Cryptus out, that he often neglected those inside. We're atoning for that mistake now. We've got Epark's lapdogs on Tyria's stoop. I'd save the farm. And Isgarin would mourn the loss. You're similar in some ways, but very different in others. Okay, so again, I think Isgarin's a really cool character. I already ranted about how much I like this stuff, but you know, like, this guy has been around for thousands of years. He sees the big picture. And, um, and that leads his sense of morality into a different place. He wouldn't save the farm because it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. But Lys, Lys, the commander, has all those same virtues and sense of wanting to do well by people and so on. But is naive, is young and is naive and thinks you can do everything and will waste precious time saving a farm. Because, and that is, that's the kiddie response, it really is. That's the juvenile response and that's the thing where it's like, well, I'm going to be the hero and save everyone. And, but at some point, if you have <laughs> to do the Spider-Man thing, if you have a lot of power, if you can do a lot, if you're Lys... And if for any one moment you can either save a nation or save a farm, you know, you, you have to tackle the trolley problem. You have to decide to, to let the people in the farm get run over so that you can go do something bigger and more important. And uh, I think they handled writing all this stuff really well. I really like the way this came out. And I empathize with his Garen a lot. But I think the funny thing is, ArenaNet knows that the community, by and large, is going to be like, I'll save the farm. The, People, by and large, will go with that naive response, and they'll be like, no, I'll save it all, I'll do everything, I'm going to save the farm, I wouldn't let anyone die. You know, you have to be that, like, kind of blatant, naively goody two-shoes. And so they have the commander say that, they have the commander say, I'd save the farm, fuck you, fuck this long-term thinking bullshit, I would save the farm. And I think everyone gets a lot of catharsis out of there, they're like, yeah, that's good, I want to hear the commander say that. In, in truth, there's a much more troubling and difficult thing going on, you know, if you were really in that position, but... I think ArenaNet really accurately recognized that having Liss say that is the right thing to do. Because that's what will resonate with people by and large, you know. I think it's really good. Also, um... Yeah, something happened between them and Epark when he got turned away from the wizards, which is interesting. And this as well, I don't know whether I really get this. Okay, he says something happened between them back in the era of magic before the gods came. And he says gods in air quotes, by the way, there, which I think we should be focusing on. These guys don't respect them as gods. They see them for what they are, meddlers, and dangerous interluders, and, you know, not necessarily a good thing. But, um, the era of magic before the gods came? Hold on. Hold on. The law is that there's loads of magic interior. The dragons eat it all, fall asleep slowly leak it out. There's more and more and more magic around as they slowly wait, leak it out. People get powerful. People get reliant on it, like the Masat, like the Seers, I guess. And then the dragons wake up and they eat all the magic and they eat all the people and fucking destroy everyone. And that's what happened last cycle. And everyone's like, oh shit. So the Seers are like, okay, we'll hide some away in a bloodstone just to survive. We'll just hide a little bit away. And that's what the Seers did. They made the bloodstone. So now the dragons are asleep. How is that an age of magic? That's a period of low magic. Right? And then the gods come, and they're like, oh, here's this bloodstone, we'll crack it open and give it to everyone. How is that an age of magic? Just before the gods came. I don't really get that. But the, maybe that maybe this is, this might be a mistell from the devs, or it could be the celestially speaking. As far as many of the planes are concerned, there was a lot of magic. Maybe the seers made more bloodstones than the one we knew about that got shattered and thrown in the volcano and stuff. Maybe there was more, and they they yeah, they they had an abundance of magic. Epart killed a village and soured his garin on him. <laughs> So, I don't know. 
Oh, wait, you're not joking. Is that actually info? Well, don't spoil me. We'll, we'll get to it when we get to it. Oh, and there's more information on the Shadow Stones. Yeah, so we should talk about that as well. The, the Seers made Bloodstones. If you remember, the current event story was about a Shadow Stone, which is this other idea. And if I remember correctly, the Bloodstones absorb and contain magic. Shadow Stones leak it out. I think that was the thing, right? Um, and there are references to the Shadow Stone in this. I just, I really need to refresh myself on exactly how Shadow Stones worked and what exactly we were doing with them around Season 3 and the current event stuff. Dragon Cycle was every 3,000 or 10,000, depending on which NPC you believe. Hold on, where's a 3,000 reference? I, I don't remember. This is weird, by the way. I'm controlling the sky scale in this chair, not Liss. How odd is that? I can make the sky scale look around, but not Liss look around. Uh, where was a 3,000? I've never read a 3,000 quote. Anyway, really good. I'm glad I pressed F on Le Lear there, because I almost missed that. Okay, let's continue along here. Um... I'm going to go this way first, because I just want to be 100% that we didn't miss someone else's quarters or anything. There's nothing up here. Like, what's this? This is Dagda's diary and the, the celestial thing, and the little puzzle that we did. There's Lear's quarters, and we did that. This was some of Zodger's stuff. And Zodger's journal, and the, the, the chest. And then the burning tree. But there were interactables in the room I got the bucket from. And then there were some more interactables up those stairs, I believe, so. Oh, or were there? It was navigational charts, I guess, which I collected. Here we go. So, a water bucket. Nothing in there. Grape vines. These vines look healthy and well cared for. The grapes aren't quite ready to harvest, but when the time comes, it's clear that they'll make an exceptional wine. Hey, they might just eat the grapes. Okay, we do that puzzle. There's another navigational chart here. This one we can't actually look at. It was in the bookshelf, I guess. This is nice for the EOD. All the concept art on all the walls and stuff is really nice to appreciate. Uh, chick there. We can come upstairs. Nothing to interact with. Okay, and we're like out in the front chambers here. So some Astral Ward or Rift Hunter, Astral Ward Protector, Rift Hunter. Let's go up and press F just in case. Don't think so. Another guy standing on his own. Okay, now this portal's on the other side of the portal we were at a second ago. Check this out. It's Livia. Okay, the bone I have to pick is I kind of wanted to see her be called Kerida here still. I feel like the more that Livia comes back into the story going forwards and she's not called Kerida. It's going to make the whole Kerida thing in Season 3 look really fucking stupid and short-lived. So I kind of want to see that be consistent. But at the same time, there's no real reason she needs to be called Kerida here. Because this is a secret society who knows who she is, which we're going to find out in a second. So, whatever. And we know she's Livia, so fine. Um, Livia? Is that you? Oh, you. They'll let just about anyone in here, won't they? You're in the Astral Ward? What happened to the Shining Blade? I'm an honorary member. Didn't quite take to Wayfinder myself when Iskarin bestowed it on me. I am always a blade. We worked together over the years. Baban and I. He loves Divinity's reach. Especially fond of the food. Before you ask, I have eyes. I know that Maban is a Mursat. It was not an easy bond to make. We can chat more of that later. I think Divinity's Reach is a little stuffy for my taste. But fair. It's nice to see another friendly face up here. I wish I wasn't. I don't like being off the ground too long. But things are especially sinister. The Bastions, as you'll soon learn, are struggling to keep the Cryptus at bay. 
Something is... stirring in the clouds. I can feel it. Gently brushing my skin. It's almost like a waiting sorrow quote there, Dagger isn't it? and Lear will be aiding us on the front. I wouldn't mind seeing your face in that crowd either. Yeah, so amazing returning NPC. Just like Gowrath, she's going to be associated with events in the new map. So you do get a good amount of Livia, Heart of Thorn style. It's really interesting Livia's in this expansion to me. The devs had two pretty good reasons not to have her anywhere near this story. One is that she's a member of the Shining Blade and shouldn't necessarily have any association here, which they explain fairly well here. She's just an honorary member of this group. And don't forget, she kind of, not on the same league, but, you know, she's 250 years old, all right? 260 years old, more than that, 270, 280. Um, she's kind of like, you know, is Garen and co, where they have this immortality kind of vibe. You know, she's very early on her existence as an immortal, so it would seem. But she's of that caliber. So I kind of like that she, at some point over the years, she learned about these guys and started interacting with them. So it makes sense and that's it. But the other big reason why you wouldn't want Livia in this story is because of Mabon. Um, when we met, the way they wrote her at the end of season three was it was all about, it wasn't about killing Lazarus. It was about killing the last Massat and fulfilling the air quotes, flame seeker prophecies and ending the race completely like i'm pretty sure like you go back and you replay it that's the vibe that she really had it out for lazarus because she had to finish all the massage off it needed to be finishing the massage off and it was this very strong sense of closing the door and the fucking massage that's really what it felt like so then to bring her in here and be like oh yeah she's allied with another massage by the way like that's a tough pill to swallow and they really have to stretch to have us swallow that. But they do anyway. And I've got to say, despite everything I just said, I love that they, they, they stretch to get Livia in here. You know, it's a little bit retconny almost. It's really right on the fucking edge to me, putting Livia in this story and, and basically saying, yeah, she's happy to associate with another Massar. Now, there are a lot of reasons why I can buy why she would. What she just explained there and that Mabon's not even really a, a normal Massar anymore because he's forgotten all his old stuff. And so th it's buyable. They just have to put a lot of energy into making us buy it. And I'm glad they did, because, you know, I think that what really happened is they were like, Livia's cool. We want to be telling these stories. We want to talk about Livia. We want to talk about the Scepter of All. The Elder Dragons are over. We have all these other cool enigmas and characters that the fans love, that, you know, they love too, presumably. Let's use them. And so they have a lot of reasons not to do Livia here, but they pushed her in there anyway. And I feel like in previous eras of Guild Wars 2 storytelling, it would not take much for them to just be like, no, we won't do Livia because you, know, you give them the slightest reason not to do Livia, so Livia won't be there. But here it's like the opposite. It's like they've really pushed to get her in. And so I really, I, you know, I'm, I'm so happy. I'm ecstatic to see her here. And I haven't really looked at the lore and stuff from in the map two as to what's going on with her. So I was giddy when I saw her. It's, it's just great. And we can ask her a lot more stuff here. Not bad scenery up here. You'll get used to the draft, though I should have packed an extra shawl. Of course, what was in my mind when I met her was like, oh my God, if Livia's here, are they going to talk about the Scepter of Awe? Are they going to talk about the Scepter of Awe? So we'll see. Here we can talk about season three. So what happened in Awe? If you're asking whether or not I knew about Mabon, I did. So she already knew even during that patch, but his experience did not change. His existence did not change my path against Lazarus. In many ways, he was the last of those monsters. Mabon was not one of them. So this is it. I mean, we get two sentences. Oh, fuck. Give me oh, what, three sentences. Sorry. I, I want more. I always want so much more. Anyway, how long have you known about Mabon then? A while. Sorry, we get more than that. We get to keep talking about it. Uh, Is Garin helped me retrieve the scepter from a group of bandits a hundred years back. Neither of us wa uh, wanted it back in the wrong hands. They hid Mabon's identity until they could trust me. All right, I've got to say here as well, this is like full-on fucking Guild Wars 1 nerd stuff here. I cannot imagine any... I mean, I guess this, I guess maybe Guild Wars 2 players can keep up with some of this stuff. So you knew about Mabon, even at the Reliquary. Yes, I did. I think back to the first inter that first interaction often, and I'm grateful he forgave me for the things that were said. Knives that were thrown. We both had to adjust to the situation. It didn't go too well. No, but I eventually listened. He's not like the others. He was just as afraid when Lazarus turned up alive. They knew of each other, back when the little war between the Seers and the Massat started. They knew each other. Not my story to tell, but yes. 
The tale predates even myself by a few thousand years. Mabon learned from his mistakes, but there's a lot about Tyria we don't know. I wish we knew more of the Massar. I mean, this is all music to my ears, all of it. It is kind of weird, though. They say, not my tale to tell. So hold on. Mabon ascended and forgot everything. Shouldn't he have forgotten all about Lazarus then? So how does Livia... Livia seems to suggest here that she knows about their prior story together. And when I first played this, Secrets of the Obscure, I was like, oh, cool. I will probably be able to ask Mabon about Lazarus later. But as far as I know, guys, you never can ask Mabon about Lazarus. Stuff's going to happen in the story that means we cannot ask Mabon about Lazarus. Which leaves the question, what does he know anyway if he forgot about that stuff? I mean, am I wrong? But maybe there's something in the next map, I don't know. We have to keep playing to see. And she says, I wish we knew more about the Masar. So it kind of feels like, you know, they're not prepared to talk more about the, the other Masar, but they are a bit. And they're at least acknowledging they're out there and could be ripe for stories. That's ominous, even for you. I don't think we have anything to worry about. Find solace in that. Lazarus is dead. The White Mantle are few and far between. If any more live, dot, dot, dot. Well, they've no interest in Tyrion games. I have a lot to think about. Oh, it's so good, isn't it? I could just read this through like three or four times. So it's a bit tricky to swallow the fucking... Like, as well, I mean, if this really... Because we all know the truth is none of this had been written back then in, during Season 3. And if it really had been written, Mabon probably would have been there in the Siren's Landing patch. You know, it probably... We would have been fighting against Lazarus and then Mabon's. It's like, who the fuck are you? Yeah, I'm another Masar. Hi, I don't like this. I'm going to help you out. You know, and then he vanishes. Obviously, Mabon as a character wasn't concepted in Season 3, so that didn't happen. How long have you known? But yeah, apparently she's known for ages. Okay, and this as well. So we hear where Livia got the Scepter of Awe from. Now... In Guild Wars 1, the Scepter of Awe is a big artifact in the main storyline. You see it in the final cutscene of Prophecies, it vanishes from the, from the uh, Fire Island chain. Just disappears mysteriously. Who disappeared it? Why did it disappear? Where did it go? Did the Scepter do it itself? Why is it important? Why are they dedicating a bit of screen, um, cinematic time to this? The mystery begins. Why is the Scepter so important, right? A few years later, Nightfall comes out and they talk about how there's this other sister, the star this other Scepter, the Staff of the Mists, and we destroy that one. We throw it into oblivion. We get rid of it, okay? But where's the Scepter of all still? Who knows? A couple of years later, Eye of the North... And the very final shot... Eye of the North has nothing to do with the Scepter of Awe. The final shot, though, is Livia claiming it. <gasps> Livia's claiming the Scepter of Awe. How has she done that? Where has she got that from? Well, and that was a mystery. Well, where did she get it? Well, here, finally, Secrets of the Obscure today, 2023. Is Garen helped her get it from a group of bandits? So that final moment of Eye of the North... Just as the final moment of Prophecies was the Scepter of War disappearing, the final moment of Eye of the North is Livia claiming the Scepter. And that cuts, they're kind of explaining what immediately happened before that cutscene. They got it from bandits? Which is really interesting. Now, I do happen to know, and we might even get this in a minute, I don't know when, they are going to talk about the Scepter of War, and the bit where it vanishes from the Prophecies cutscene, they talk about that as well, and they fully explain that. Concrete answers to why it disappeared from the Fire Island chain at Hell's Precipice. We will hear that. But yeah, um, they're still kind of light on the details, though. But yeah, then we move away from the Scepter again real quick. We can ask her more about the Scepter soon. It's really good, though. There's so much there. And yeah, I was very, very, very excited about that. So we get another thing, and it's placed right next to Livia in the hopes that people will definitely click on her. You guys notice how few Silvari there are here. And there's another thing about that, this whole, like, organization that's really interesting when you think about Silvari, and that's the fact that the Silvari fell under the influence of Morgamoth. So if they brought any there's Silvari the into the ward, surely there would have been a Morgamoth incursion up here. And they do talk about that and explain that as well, which is really good as well, because that's one of those things that I hadn't thought about, but the writers clearly didn't. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's important. And they figured it out. I don't know, there's just something very weird about the Wizard's Court, that they're all about gathering knowledge, but they all forget everything about their past lives when they join, which means that there's not knowledge, actually, in a lot of places. Like, they don't know much about the Massar. It's a bit odd. I don't know. Is Garin... You know, it's kind of inquesty though, in the same way, like, you get the idea that the big bosses at the top of the inquest know everything that's going on and are, like, 
really learning a lot. Is Garin's kind of that thing, you know? Is Garin knows a lot. Um, did we read this? Yeah, that was the other scrap of that journal, another intriguing mystery. And he just doesn't let everyone privy to all the info. Which, you know, there's, there's a lot of weird sinister stuff about how a lot of this stuff's structured. Would that mean that Morgamoth knew about the Wizard's Court? In theory, yeah. Like, it's actually a fucking epic plot hole. If the devs hadn't thought about it, it's a huge plot hole. To say that there are wizard, there are Silvari taken into the Wizard's Court during the time of Heart of Thorns, and that's what they're saying. So they need an answer for that. A brilliant and there hammer. is an answer for that, and it's which an is good. Mountain. Oh, we'll get. There's you know, I'm power. jumping the gun here. We're not at it right now, but it will come up. Maybe in this instance somewhere. I don't know. I mean, basically, guys, the rest of this series is going to be like this. The next map is full of this kind of thing. It's just interactables everywhere, stuff to read everywhere. Okay, and for what it's worth, we are at the southern entrance right now. And as you'll see, so this is where the meta event ended at the start of this part. This was the door we came in. And there were books everywhere here, and they're not here again now. Don't stand a are chance. They? But this is where that book was we read a second ago. This was the one about the Elder Dragons. So we are going to have to complete that meta more to read those other books. Or we can do it on the wiki where we can do it at our own leisure and stuff. I'll probably try and do a mix. But yeah, it, they are not here, it looks like, in this other version. Of course, then there's the actual Arborstone edition. We're still just in the story instance right now. So we can check if they're there in the Arborstone edition. The power. In the hub edition. But I don't think that they will be. Um, I'm just being thorough here. Or trying to be thorough. Wrong achievement. I wanted water. Give myself swiftness. Okay, did we mount through that? No. Well, we could, I guess. I was just too close. Uh, it looks like it's just a rock-solid wall here. This is nice, getting the chain-link fence effect there. Okay, i got to... Go upstairs, probably, and then down. Couple more Cryptist stragglers to hunt. Two more misplaced artifacts to recover. And then, uh, essentially done, I think, at that point. Okay, we can open that one. Target shoot out in here. Lots of training. Whose quarters are these? Rage on? at maximum. Oh, even this archery shootout props. Now that's cool that they took these. It's funny because we never really saw the archery shootout actually in action, you know. I wonder if these were animated at some point or were like destructible, like the Kylo assets. Confidential report. Okay, here's another one. Another scenario. This one's called Glass Dragon. The scenario for Glass Dragon is if there's ever a mounted aerial raid of Amatas. So a rapid response to large-scale aerial raid by Cryptus-possessed winged mounts. This one employs experimental weather-controlled magical technology. The primary risk factor here is indiscriminate targeting. So like lightning from this storm that they summon would hit random shit. Also, grounds destroys allied aerial forces. Long-term effect on Tyrian weather patterns would be unclear. Comment. Intriguing. Is Garin's commenting on this one? Intriguing. Investigate the current status of weather-controlled technology and magic. Is that what they were doing at Garenhof, you know, and then they caused the storms there in that fractal accidentally when it got destroyed? I love this, though. That's a great visual as well. Demon mounts flying through the sky, attacking the place. So that's the Glass Dragon. I doubt that will be in Map 3. I mean, it might be. Do we get to see Glass Dragon occurring at Fallen Divinity's Reach within the Realm of Nios? Yeah, that's right, guys. I'm not going to let it go. I'm going to keep saying it over and over and over again. Uh, Torn Journal page. The first time... Who wrote this, first of all? We don't know who wrote this. The first time I stood on the edge of Amatas, I wanted to faint. Mabon and Wayno weren't far... Oh, this will be from Zodger. This is Zodger. The first time I stood on the edge, I wanted to faint. Mabon and Wayno weren't far away, as if they expected just that to happen. A fortress in the sky. You know what? I don't buy this either. It's Zodger. What the fuck is Ratasum, alright? Ratasum is a floating city. You know, she has some frame of reference. 
A fortress in the sky, hovering above us this entire time. I have a thousand questions, and Mabon's trying his best to keep up with each one. They call themselves the Astral Ward. I, I choose to believe that her thousand questions are born out of Asura arrogance. Like, she's amazed that any other society on Tyria could do this and keep it hidden. Those are the questions. <laughs> um... Mabon's trying his best to keep up with each one. They call themselves the Astral Ward, and they're led by a small group of wizards. What is a wizard exactly? Seemed a little archaic, but it all has something to do with the magic left behind by the seers. Especially powerful individuals can ascend through a taxing ritual if they're offered it. That ritual allows them to tap into the magical ecosystem of Tyria to an extent. Now that's interesting. That's essentially what they just did with that moon ritual upstairs, right? Mabon is one of them, and there's another named Dagda. I've yet to meet Isgaran for myself. He's usually locked away in the library or the world spire, but this place is a campus of magical development, education and research, a living archive of Tyria itself. There are Lagos, Ogres, Asura and Silvari working together, living together, alongside the wizards. They've been protecting us from alchemy. Who knows what. Mabon asked if I want to join the Astral Ward, and I I might say yes. What scientist would turn down the opportunity to crack the world open and peer inside? The scientist part of my brain is on fire, and I have no intention of dousing the flame. So you go. And uh, th this idea of them, like, a whole other type of magic, a whole other thing of looking into Tyria and stuff. It's all expanding the world in a, in, a, in a lot of ways. But I think it's fine. You know, it's Rick, time for it to happen. Saying all magic was all Elder Dragon related always and so on. It was a bit of a dead end at this point, you know, so. I like that they're expanding. So there's a journal in here. Who's, whose quarters are we in, we in now? This is a long journal here. It had been too long since I returned to Caledon to check on the state of the market. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, this one's very cool. All right, remember that we got this Massart called Mabon? Now, I've got a little story for you all. Um, and it goes like this. I'm playing the Guild Wars 2 Alpha. And I'm really excited about how the Guild Wars 1 world map lines up with the Guild Wars 2 world map. And I'm really excited about this quote that there's all these old ruins and mysteries and, um, and secrets. And we might learn more about the Seers and the Massart and stuff. And so I'm at the Tarnished Coast on my Ellie. And I find this old ruin. And the POI of the ruin is called the Unseen Ruins. Oh, not the POI, just the area. I think there is a POI there as well, maybe. The Ruins of the Unseen. And I'm like, oh my god, the Tarnished Coast. This is where we saw loads of Massar in Guild Wars 1. This is where the Lazarus the Dire quests were taking place. Holy shit, are these Massar ruins? And while I'm at this place, there's a golem in the area patrolling around. And the golem is acting like he can see something. He's like talking like he sees an entity in the area. And no one else can see it, but the golem can. And I'm like, oh my god, is there, are these Massart ruins? And is there a, an invisible Massart floating around here and I can't see it because I'm ascended? Oh my god, geek out, geek out, geek out. You know, early days, exploring Guild Wars 2, wondering what things become. You know, very quickly, it, it's like, oh, this really doesn't mean anything. There was no lore, there was no story. The way they deliver lore and story didn't really mean anything, so don't think about it too much. Years later, it's 2023, I'm playing Secrets of the Cure, Obscure. There's a Massart called Mabon, and just next to that ruin is the Mabon Market. Surely this is just a... Uh, that doesn't mean anything, right? That doesn't mean anything. Routine check on Mabon Market. It had been too long since I returned to Caledon to check on the state of the market. Ever since the birth of the Silvari, I have monitored the area as closely as I could without interfering with their nature. But I have had an urge to check in on their well-being. After Mordremoth, I needed to see how they were faring. It feels cruel that I hadn't checked in sooner. I didn't wear my face, as I promised to Isgarin, should he find this account, but these are some of the few non astral Ward that know my real name, who know who I am, despite presenting as an especially kind-faced char. And Ophelia's scream when I rounded the path made the venture out of Amethyst worth it. We only sat for a, while, for a short while, watching travellers pass. Myrtle prepared us some fresh basil tea with just a pinch of buttermilk. I never tire of Tyrian cuisine. They were well, it seems. Things in the grove had been uneasy, uneasy since Mordremoth's rise and death, but they were mo moving in a direction of peace. 
Some Silvari have left the shadow of the Pale Tree in search of what's next. Others have lost faith. But even the Nightmare Court has calmed in the following years. Fewer attacks at least. We recounted our first meeting, that dreary day. Many of the Silvari still lingered within the warm embrace of the grove, but Maibi was curious about the world, barely a few months old, and one of the few brave enough not only to venture out into the world, but live beyond the walls of their garden sanctuary. The market hadn't been established, but she called that little red bulb home. I was headed back from the jungle when I heard her scream. The crate had found her little sanctuary. I expelled the enemy and... Poor Maybe. Surely she didn't know what to do with me either. He had, ne had never seen a char before as the ceasefire was still recent. And even if I sculpted that identity to be as warm as possible, having a large feline stand before her was frightening nonetheless. When I convinced her that I was no foe, her face lit up with joy. The same curiosity I attribute to all of their kind. Lovely, beautiful creatures. My visit was cut short when I felt Isgarin's pull at the back of my mind, beckoning me back to the wizard's tower. I hailed my friends for a long moment and then I left. I won't take as long to visit them the next time. So, as far as I can tell, there was a Massart here near the ruins. It was Mabon. And Mabon was in this area for whatever reason and met some Silvari and they actually named the market after him. It was a secret. They had met him and they named the, 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 the market after him as Sart this whole time. And how cool is that? I mean, obviously it's newly written lore or whatever, but it, it fits so cohesively. We now know why the Mabon market is called the Mabon market. And it's related to the curiosities just to the north as far as I care to, to believe. It's really cool. Um, and they even take some time while tying all those little things together to give us a little bit of news about what's going on with the Silvari these days. And it's a good story too, you know, early Silvari leaving the tree and finding a Massart. That's a cool little plot idea. They even incorporate the crate into it a bit, which makes sense since we're near Ventry Bay. And when you think about early Silvari leaving, you think about the whole Malanides thing and their early interactions with the Inquest. Um, it's, just, it's just an excellent little story. So I was really happy with this one. I think there was something else I was going to say as well, but Christ, I've forgotten it. And it's weird to see a Massar being so nice, you know, and being so sweet and tender and whatever. Yeah, it's a really great tie-in. They really should have updated a certain Silvari's dialogue in the market for the collection. Oh, is there a, collect a Mabon collection? I, don't, I haven't done any of that yet. Yeah, and also all the characters that are named in that, in that thing are actually NPCs at the market, I assume. Aging journal entry. So this is another one from Zoja. I've been within the walls of the Wizard's Tower for months now. Not all of my memories have returned since the ritual, and they likely won't, but the pit in my gut screams all night. I've little reprieve from what lies but Wait, is it from her? No, this can't be her. This is an old journal. Someone who's, all who's ascended and has lost their memories. So who is this? Let's just read it. I've been within the walls of the Wizard's Tower for months now. That's why they say it's aging, I guess. Not all of my memories have returned since the ritual, and they likely won't. So they get some of their memories back. So Mabon probably knows some things about the Massar, which explains why he could have told Livia about his Lazarus memories. So they get some memories. They likely won't, but the pit in my gut screams all night. I've little reprieve from what lies below the surface. Probably angry that I hid it all away. Isgarin says he holds no grudge. But he's still guarded with me, especially when it grows dark in the evenings. He usually crawls back to his chambers or resumes work elsewhere. I'd understand if he was always like this, though. All I can do now is try to be better than whoever I was before, but that might be a challenge based on what I've learned. I suppose his Garum wouldn't have gone along with the ritual if there was any lingering distrust between us, since it keeps us together for the foreseeable future. He could have also done it for a personal gain. His world spire is incomplete after all, and he needed another pair of hands to work with the Shadow Stone. I wouldn't have been able to help him if I hadn't gone through with it. At least I'm making an impact. His Garum might be strange, but he's not bad. Nervous, maybe, and a little naive, but not evil. He did spare me that day even though the Massart gave him every reason to gut me before I could do the same to him. My people are cruel. What glimpses remain are disquieting. We're listening to Mabon. Disgusting. Even torture. Suffering. Blood everywhere. What all did I... Uh, what all did... What all did I do that I just can't see? All I've left of myself, my past self, that doesn't make me want to crumble into the abyss, is her voice. I don't know who she is. But it might be the only flicker of anything that proves I'm not inherently malevolent. 
They are out there in the realm of dreams. Our home. Our actual home. I see them sometimes when I slumber. Her voice sounds like ocean waves. Even if her mask is just a golden sheen smeared at the back of my mind. Oh my god, this is a hell of a document here. Why don't I remember reading this when I came through this the first time? I might have never read this before. I believe I've seen people online talking about this one. Because this is clearly... If this is Mabon, and I think it is Mabon. We are talking about Mabon's... La who he became after the ritual. We're talking about... You know, okay, okay let's, let's just set the stage here. We have Isgar and Asir allowing a Masat to join this organization. All right? That was fucking crazy, because these two people were at war for years, you know, these these two societies. So Mabon saying, uh, like, holy fuck, I've forgotten a lot about my past life. Like, does Isgaran really trust me? He doesn't seem to spend too much time with me. You know, he crawls back to his chambers, he works elsewhere. But he's saying, well, he must trust me to have let me go through the ritual. But he's nervous about who he once was. I'm all about this. This is really great. Um... I gotta stop saying everything's great because it loses all meaning, doesn't it? But yeah, this is so we get a hint about the world spire here as well, which we'll learn more about in map two. Um He needs a Massad to help him work with the Shadow Stone. Which I guess powers the World Spire. If Bloodstone store magic, Shadow Stones release it, he's using that to power the World Spire. And so yeah, we get a bit of Mabon's view on his own people. Cruel disquieting glimpses but then Massar and love now this is something because what you guys have got to understand all right if you didn't play guild wars 1 you know Massar with the big bad guys in that but guild wars 1 was not a sophisticated game as far as storytelling is concerned they really didn't do much okay you didn't hear that much about them at start they were enigmatic they were self-interested they were a cool archetype all right but that's all that they were an archetype they weren't rounded out you know, there weren't any great Massart characters. Lazarus, he was hardly a fucking character, you know? He was just a Massart that split himself into phylacteries, and we we got very, very little, you know? Mostly just generic, villainous monologuing. Not anything real. We didn't hear, hear about love, or reproduction, or real society, civil civilization. There were always suggestions of the Massart being like a shade of grey, because they weren't s necessarily evil. They were just self-interested. I've said that before. But the idea of romance among Massart, what they really live for, what what gives them pleasure, what did their society truly mean? These are fascinating questions that I love to see ArenaNet poking at here, and that's what they're doing. Mabon loved someone once. Who was she? Let's read it again. All that I've left of myself, my past self, that doesn't make me want to crumble into the abyss is her voice. I don't know who she is, but it might be the only flicker of anything that proves that I'm not inherently malevolent. And then there's a quote. Who is this quote from? Is this a demo, demon whispering to him? Influencing him? Manipulating him? Suggesting to him that there's something great for him? Who, what, who is this quoting? They are out there in the realm of dreams. Our home. Our actual home. So hold on. Is this saying that the Massart's actual home is in the realm of dreams? Because that's weird. Because I got the sense that the realm of dreams was only recently created by Eparch. And his cohort. If that said they are out there in the, in the mists, our home, our, our actual home, I, that would have made sense. Because, yes, there's always been this impression that during the last Elder Dragon Rising, a bunch of Massart slipped out of phase with this reality and went somewhere else, and that there probably is a society of them out there. They're out there in the realm of dreams, our home, our actual home. I see them sometimes when I slumber. Her voice sounds like ocean waves. And what's this watery reference? What's this? Why are we? Why have we got this simile? This suggestion of the ocean waves? Just because superficially that sounds nice? Well, I refuse to believe it's superficial. There must be something more there. Even if, her, and I love this bit though as well. Her ma even if her mask is just a golden sheen smeared at the back of my mind. You know, and you think about that typical like Massart visual with a lot of gold in it. You know. I don't know what I make of this. This is this is confusing. I mean, it's great, but it's also confusing me. Is it just that a demon is trying to convince Mabon to go to the realm where they can eat him alive or something? Yeah, Naos is... Yes, just to be clear, someone just said it in chat. Naos is the realm of dreams. It's the same place. They're just two words for the same thing. 
But the idea that the Massart's actual home is in the realm of dreams, that just seems weird to me. Maybe this, because... To get a sense of the timeline here, Eparch gets spurned by the wizard's court and then goes and becomes a king of a people and makes a, a, a realm for them. The wizard's court, though, is after the Massart Seer War and so on and after the last Elder Dragon Rising, right? Probably? How many Elder Dragon Risings have these guys seen? Do we actually get a date for the, the formation of the Wizard's Court? Do we know how many Risings they saw? Were they active during the... Not the Rising we just beat, but the one before then? Were they active then? Were they active before that? Because I kind of got the impression they, they formed after that. I kind of... I, I've just been living with this vibe that, like, the Seer civilization collapsed in the Massart Seer War. And, and Isgaran made this after that, but maybe that's all wrong as well. I can't imagine the Wizard's Court being here during that war. You, okay, here's a theory in chat, that Naos could be the Massart homeworld, the Massart get culled out of there, Isgaran outcasts Eparch, Eparch goes to Naos, empty due to the culling, and reclaims it. So you think Eparch is a Massart demon? Kossish says, WP, well, we know the general era when the Wizard's Court was founded, which is post-Dragon Rise. Which Dragon Rise? But we'll have to check journals to see if we can get an actual date. Yeah, I don't have a... I only have a certain vibe of when they were founded. Which is funny, I've been complimenting them as doing a lot more with the history of Tyria, this expansion, in tangible ways. But I feel like that's a tangible we should have, and we don't have. Oh... Oh, I guess we're going to have to move on from this, but I have to say... Oh my god, I'm slumping in my chair so much here. But I'm guessing... Um, I, I don't know, I want to figure this out. They being the Massar, is that who we're referring to here? They are out there in the realm of dreams. Our home, our actual home is in the realm of dreams. Okay, I think there's another thing that's going on here. Why is Naos called the realm of dreams? Does it promise people things? Does it manifest luxuries and happiness or whatever? Is it, is it like baiting people into it somehow? This like emotion connection? This. So is, is, that, is that... Is it all just bullshit, basically? I kind of feel like this might be bullshit. Like it's like a demon is just trying to sway Mabon. Be like, yeah, your real home's out there. It's in the realm of dreams. Come to the realm of dreams. You think that Eparch is some sort of evolved forgotten, but that's another conversation. Really? Oh, I'm really liking this at the moment, guys. Very good stuff coming from chat here. Why would you think Eparch is an evolved forgotten? Uh, the forgotten are really fascinating in this story as well, because they're conspicuous by their absence, right? Um, I think that they're going to make the forgotten a bit villainous going forwards. I think that they're making the gods a bit villainous and generally dangerous for Tyria. And we know the Forgotten were deeply in cahoots with the gods. You know, the Forgotten, of all these ancient races, right? Who were the ones that tended to Tyria like a garden, you know? In like that early, early lore. Who was it that worked alongside the gods? You know, who sided with them? The fucking got Forgotten, you know? And so if we're going in that route, I think they might be holding back some Forgotten stuff because... They, they might go in the bin with the gods, so to speak. But look, I don't think that they would go fully in the bin with the gods. Let me just be clear. I think the best way to write this is to really show why these guys don't like what the gods did and are annoyed about the gods tampering and they're, they're you know, they're interfering in different planes and stuff. And then when we get to a mini X back where the gods are actually relevant there or we meet one of them, the gods get to make their case and their case should be reasonable too. And so, and there's this conflict, but I want to buy all sides, you know. I don't want to just say the gods are evil, the wizard's court are good, you know. Maybe the gods come in and illustrate all the dodgy shit that the wizard's court's been doing that I kind of have all these vibes for right now, you know. And that's not to even say we have to boil this down to a simplistic com conflict, court v gods or whatever, but you know what I mean. Anyway, so, uh, so yeah, then we've got some statues. These are obviously the chests that you open at the end of raids and you form as gold statues at your guild halls. I really want to do some guild hall decorating. Oh my god. Because I want to make a proper trophy room. Anyway, here's Deimos. And the creature that we saw 
in the realm of dreams in episode one looked a lot like Deimos, didn't it? And you're welcome to think that. And you're welcome to wonder all about that. So here's actually Deimos. And this is Isgaran remarking on Deimos. This statue has a plaque engraved with the following. Deimos, failed by the Pact Commander. Never forget that Tyria has defences of their own. We need not shoulder every burden. Well, that's one way to send a message. So that's literally us dealing with a Cryptus event without even realising it. And we'll talk more about the Bastion of the Penitent and the Deimos connection later as the story goes along. This statue has a plaque that reads Samarog. Samrog was not our destiny to correct, but that of another. We must keep our eyes on the obscure. The rest will correct itself. Seems like Isgaran was pretty single-minded. So Samrog's an interesting thing to put here, because, yeah, it was within the Bastion, but it was a prisoner, right? The, Mas the Masar had taken this species and imprisoned it. But we don't know whether Samrog... I don't think Samrog was a demon, personally. I don't think it was a Cryptus... It was just a, a crazy species from somewhere on Terrier. Who knows where? Are there areas of the Horn? Dajka? Who knows? But it had been in this jail. And again, Samrog is one of those things I really like because it's expansive, isn't it? It makes it feel like there's a lot of species and things to learn about Terrier that we still don't know. The Massat that took over the Bastion of the Penitent could tell us all about Samrog. But yeah, Isgaran didn't give a fuck about that creature. Anyway, here's some mysterious energy. Ripples over a symbol affixed to the base of this statue. The inscri inscription reads, Only those with the strongest wills are rewarded with the key to their destiny. Look at the inscription. Examining the inscription in more detail, you see the words strongest of wills highlighted with a slight glow of energy. Something turns your stomach if you focus on it on, too long on them. Touch the glowing words. Begin the trial of strength. Enjoy the curse of Massart's spectral agony for one minute to prove your strength and dispel this energy guarding the Bastion Key. So, spectral energy, uh, uh, spectral agony was essentially like, imagine bleeding, but it's so strong it can one-shot you every second, okay? That's what the Massart cast on you in Guild Wars 1. They were like gods. You couldn't do anything against them. They were the ultimate evil. So you, what you needed to do was go to a seer, and the seer would teach you how to infuse your armor and defend yourself against Spectre Agony, and then you were safe. And and therefore, when you guy when you Guild Wars two players play Fractals, the Agony feature in you know, and you get Agony resistance, it's referencing this Spectre Agony thing. And there were references in season three as well to the same thing. We tried the same story out back then. It makes sense to me that they'd have a reference to Spectral Agony and infusion and stuff. Um, in this, if there's Basar and Isgaran, the seer is one of the big characters. So yeah, begin the trial of strength. It's incredibly weak here. Endure agony through strength of will. Endure the effects of spectral agony and recover 25% health. I can't believe how crappy this is. I don't even think I'm going to have to use the button. I mean, this should have been coded a bit better. Because this kind of just... This just craps all over. <laughs> <laughs> what it once upon time was. Yeah, what one tor three torment, sorry, and some confusion, and I'm never going to cast under the confusion. Well, maybe I might. All right, we're below 25%. Oh, wow. This is crazy. They nerfed it? Oh, this was stronger before, was it? It was stronger a day or two? Why have they nerfed it? Oh... This is like the Cordicus boss fight all over again. Anytime there's something decent, I'm telling you guys, can MMOs be art? The answer is fucking no. The answer is no. There you go. Wow, we did it. That was intense, wasn't it? I sure am glad that didn't do more damage. If that did more damage, I might have just quit the game, you know? I mean, really. Remember, the ultimate danger to any video game is the game over screen. Accelerating. Volcano. That took you an hour at launch. It scales with your condi damage. Rage oh, so it maximum. was actually just poorly implemented and they band-aided it. That's what's actually happened there, is it? Do that in condi gear next. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll sit here and bitch and whine and be judgmental, but I'm not actually going to subject myself to the real experience. No, it's too late now. <laughs> Of a volcano. It just shows the commander's really strong. 
You guys say it scales with uh, conditions. I was actually vaguely wondering if it was scaling with my storms. agony resist, my fractal agony resist, right? So I've got 144 there, and I'm fine. But I immediately, I didn't even verbalize that, because to really consider that would be to tie personal story progression to fractal progression, and they would just never, ever, ever do that. It's just, it's just There's the power. Uh, excuse me. Can you not rolling devil away, please? I really Still wish I could see enemy work. models better in Guild Wars. Good work, Wayfinder. That's one of the big differences when I'm playing Final Fantasy XIV. Every enemy I see, I really get to look at their model and I fucking fall in love with every single one of them. They're all so cool and exciting and so on. Right, I'm just going to carry this with, with me because this is the last one. And we have this room full of interactables here now as well. So here's another journal. Why not ask if I needed a ride to go wherever I was heading? And I agreed to go with it. I don't usually do spontaneous these days, but I don't have anywhere better to be, do I? We stopped in Garenhof first so she could meet with an old friend. I sat at the pier and watched the wizard's tower while I waited. What a marvel. Heh, I wonder what the gimmick is. When I finished lunch, we sat there for a while and talked. She used to be a professor in the colleges, but she left after years and years of frustration with the systems. Students set up for failure. Refusal to grow or expand. Sound familiar? She's lived along the outskirts of Divinity's Reach for some time, teaching statics to the locals. She's a lot like Zin here, right? Like being on the outskirts, leaving and going to, uh, you know, I mean, literally the outskirts of Divinity's Reach. Zin was on the Divinity Coast just 250 years earlier. Anything to get technology in more hands. Humans are terrible at maths. I like her. She doesn't remind me of Ratasum. While there's plenty to miss, it just wasn't the same after Maguma. I'm not the same after Maguma. You know, I honestly thought we'd read this already on this series. This is really good. I can totally buy Zodja leaving and connecting with this other sort of outcast who's also grown fed up with, you know, the way that their institutions are set up there. Urchik, do you want to say anything to me, boy? No? Is that it? Just one journal in here? I guess so. I say that like I'm whinging, but we have been in this instance for at least an hour. I think an hour and a half for this one story instance. And yeah, it's like it's like going to the Dermon Priory archives, isn't it? Yeah, the ambience here is not as good as in there. The Dermon and Priory special archives with the dark room, with the librarians whispering to be quiet, with the music that was in there. I mean, that, that was something else, okay? I'm in the Wizard's Tower. This is such a fantastic moment, right? S surrounded by lore. But I still say the Dermond Priory Special Archives was better. Just because of the ambience, alright? And fucking Zaitan's tail hanging over the top and ah. Uh. But this is still very, very, very good, of course. Um, well, hold on. If I put this in, the key... Oh no, we still got three more keys to do anyway. So there's still plenty more. Not that one. Sorry, I thought that said five of six. It was the other one that says five of six. The navigational charts, I'm at five of six. Not that one. Okay, we got two more to find, basically. Let's go through the portal. And I have a feeling that a lot of them are on the eastern wing. So let's go low first. Oh, maybe... Do you think they're up, actually? No, there's a navigational chart there. Yeah, we gotta, we got to get in there somehow. There's not a corridor along there. And, like, we've been in here an hour and a half reading this stuff. This is still just a fraction. You wait, the next part, guys, we're going to be doing the same again, but in the open world in Arborstone. And it, there's a lot of cool stuff. There's adventures and all sorts of fun to be had. In fact, there's a very good adventure with a special thing for Boots, and yesterday, once this video is over, if you guys are watching this live, you can go to Boots' channel after this and check out his most recent episode. It is very cool. It is very special. So there you go. That's the last navigational chart. Here's a confidential report. Another strategic scenario. This is Cardinal Blue. The scenario here is the assassination of an enemy target. So, this is a raid based on pinpoint assault tactics using portal technology in combination with fire-based magic and or weaponry. So the risk here is a potential uh, portal hiccup blowback resulting in friendly fire. 
A comment from Dagda is more testing in a controlled environment is required. Lezzy referring to the explosion as hiccup is insensitive at best, given the entire squad spent six weeks in the infirmary. Okay, so they tested it and it did not go well. This I see, this might be, um, we might do Cardinal Blue in the next patch in 60 days. You know, maybe we use Cardinal Blue to, to go to the Realm of Knives. We did that report. So I just missed that sneaky room there, basically. This is the infirmary. There's mysterious energy, I think, on the other side of the wall. Mysterious energy pulses with powerful magic, unlike anything you've seen before. Some sort of symbol uh, with text along the top of the border. A riddle. Read the riddle. The text on the symbol reads... By the way, okay, I'm, don't even read the top. Just look at the answers. The truth, knowledge, a choice, secret. Oh no, never mind, never mind, never mind. I thought they were all going to be really jokey and it would be really obvious which is the answer, just based purely on the answer. But no, it could be many of them. The text reads, When you have me, you want to share me. But when you share me, you no longer have me. What am I? Everything. We must cover what we have. We must cling to them tightly. Sharing is a way to ruin. I don't believe in sharing. So what do we have? Well, a choya. Okay, when when I have a choya, I want to share the choya because it tastes so good. Delicious fruit, you know. But when I share the choya, I no longer have the choya because they've eaten the choya. So a choya works. Now, knowledge. When I have knowledge, I want to share it. Yeah, that's true. But when I share the knowledge, I no longer have it. Well, that's not true. You get to keep knowledge and share it. Knowledge propagates. So it's not knowledge is definitely not correct. The truth. When we have the truth, we want to share the truth. But when we share the truth, we no longer have it. Well, does a thing stop being true just because everybody knows it? No, that's not true. So it can't be either of the two top options. A secret. When I have a secret, I want to share the secret. When I share the secret, it is no longer a secret. Okay, so which is it, guys? Is it a choya or is it a secret? Okay, and I just want to make the case it could be either. I mean, clearly the real answer is a secret. But you could, uh, Choya works, as does any food stuff. And I don't want to hear that it's insensitive for me to refer to the Choya as a food stuff. Because they clearly are food stuffs. And you know, they're primitives. It's okay to farm Choya, alright? That's perfectly ethical agriculture. I see no issues. Okay, um... So this is the four, the, so there's one more Bastion key somewhere. And presumably there's a misplaced artifact with it. Now you'll notice when I open those artifact chests I don't actually get anything. I also already have the achievement. So we're not technically missing anything for missing that. But it would be nice to get it. Here's another scenario. This one's called Cold Frame. This is if missiles are attacking Amitas. Defensive structural redistribution of spire platforms in response to concentrated magic, energy explosives or other unknown aerial weapon bombardments. So the risk here is the fine control of the structures requires A, staggering magical resources, or B, total restructural retrofit of the prototype technology still in research and development phase. And the comment from Abon is, what does this gain us that a magic-based barrier wouldn't? That one's pretty generic, I suppose, but... I like the idea of the attack, the missile-based attack. Um... Aha! So check it out, Zodger's Quarters. So there's another journal here. And here's what we get to hear what she was doing during Ayr's memorial. Now this is a really big moment and a really important one for the writers to talk about because this is the start of season three. This is right after the Blighting Pod shit, okay? Ayr's memorial was a period of time where both Logan and, where both Zodger and Logan were still mysteries to the community. It was like, will, will Logan show up to the memorial? Surely he will, members of Destiny's Edge. Is he weak? What's going on? You know, and it wasn't until Lake Doric we saw like his injuries and all that kind of stuff and we learned things. So they were both in that position. Um, this was when the mystery began of what's going on with Zodger. This is the start of it. So it's really good to me, I think, that they, did, they picked this moment to talk about. Ayr's memorial was a few weeks ago. I didn't go. I didn't want to. The invitation is still sitting at the bottom of the bin next to my cot. I looked at it again the other day. Newt's handwriting hasn't improved. Like, I like this, a little bit of snark is still there in her. Because she's not written snarky at all in this expansion. She's just really nice in this expansion. Logan, I, th I feel like that, and that's good, because it's like she's changed. She's a, she's a likeable character, she's gone through some shit. 
and she's changed a bit and I think that the fans will like her more the way they've written her in this one Logan tried to stop by the infirmary he's on his feet again I guess I told Tamo that I didn't want visitors Logan probably just wanted to talk about her Air. well Logan probably wanted to share his experience of being in a pod as well Air. he wrote not long ago didn't go to the memorial either but I didn't write him back I just don't want to talk to anyone right now I don't want to see anyone I want to be left alone my vision is still fuzzy and I can barely lift myself out of bed anyway. What I want is to sleep and then sleep some more. So that's like a 10 out of 10 decision for a, a journal or whatever. Um, Alright, and then we got Mr. Sparkles. Check it out. Zodger's loyal golem. Mr. Sparkles sits dormant and covered in a thick layer of dust. Although it looks to have been repaired since Maguma, it's completely powered down and inactive. And you remember in Heart of Thorns, there's a whole bit about Mr. Sparkles. Use your expertise. Oh, wow, was a sewer. I can do this. Use your expertise to run a diagnostic on Mr. Sparkles. This will probably be one of those things where quite often you get a special interaction if you're a sewer or an engineer. That usually lets you interact with a golem in a deeper way. That happens a lot in Guild Wars. I like that. Just like how thieves can quite often, like, pick a lock or something. You attempt to initialize the golem's diagnostic module, but quickly discover that Mr. Sparkles is missing an active energy core, or even a housing for it. He is, for all intents and purposes, dead. I wonder if, as the story progresses, we'll get a super Mr. Sparkles powered by a shadow stone. That would be pretty cool, eh? Or, you know, if Zodger ascends, and we'll talk more about that topic later, but if that happens... Would she even give a fuck about Mr. Sparkles anymore? Maybe one of the memories she still has is with that. Sorry, buddy. And this letter, I think, explains where she got it from. Yeah, Mabon wrote to Zodja. Zodja, you're still adjusting to your new place in this strange new world, but I thought you could use a friend. I know that Maguma stirs too many memories, so I went ahead and retrieved him from you. What was he called? Mr. Glitter? Mr. Sparkles? Your friend, Mabon. Mabon's, like, such a decent, nice guy, you know? It's like, Mabon goes from being a character I want to spend a lot of time with because he's such an in intriguing in the lore, to just being a nice character I want to spend a lot of time with because he's so decent, you know? I do think they should have kept the wings, though. I don't know. I think he should have had the wings. Do the wings really look that evil or crazy? I mean, come on. He just looks oddly naked without them to me, you know? That's honestly how I feel about it. I think, I, I really think, I think uh, Isgaran should have looked more like a seer, less like a djinn. And Mabon should have had the wings. Maybe he should have the wings, but different clothes, you know. That would have been quite a cool setup. Okay, uh, so this, again, I guess this is Waiting Sorrow here. I decided to leave. First decision I've made since waking up that brings me any sense of relief. Packed up my things and hit the road. Rat assume, eat dolly. Act oh, no, no, no. Sorry, this is Zodja. I think we've had what we're going to get from waiting. Sorry. This is Zodja leaving Rat assume. I decided to leave. First decision I've made since waking up that brings me any sense of relief. Packed up my things and hit the road. Rat assume, eat dolly. Act dung. Have fun clearing out my closet. Just give me credit for anything you find in there. I hitched a ride to Queensdale. I haven't been out here in a while. It hasn't changed a bit. I like that little note, because, you know, as the MMO players, if we ever go to Queensdale, it's always that same fluttery, magical, nostalgic, beautiful place. Stayed in the same lodge Logan and I did every time we went to Lion's Arch. The smell's poignant. Is that a reference to the novel? And I've forgotten them staying in an inn. Meat and cedar. Lots of sweat. Uh, they just finished a boar hunt when I... Oh, and then the boar hunting lodge. Like, we know exactly what this is, right? This is a real place in-game that you can visit. What ArenaNet are telling you is that Z Zodja stayed in this in here, the Queen's Forest. Because that's where the boar hunt event happens. And, you know, you can go to the bar. And we now know that it smells of sweat. They just finished a boar hunt when I arrived, so the whole venue is celebrating. What are they celebrating, you might ask? If I had to guess, just being alive, not being stomped out by an elder dragon. Being around happy people is refreshing. Loud, though. Two years ago, I was sitting in my bed in the infirmary. I stared out the window all day, listening to the judgmental whispers outside my door. Look at this, two years! Now I'm sitting in this tavern, glass full of juice. Ao doesn't agree with me, these, the, with me these days. Oh my god, she mentioned juice, and I just realised how thirsty I am, and how badly I'd love a glass of orange juice right now. Joined by other, or, or orange squash, I should say. Joined by other Asura, actually. A lady named Wayno. I feel like I know the name. But I can't recall if we've ever crossed paths before. There you go. So that's her meeting her. And that's a new friendship that will eventually lead her to here. And I suppose it's quite fitting that's the last journal I read. That probably should have been the first journal I read if we want to get Zodja's story all in order. But, I mean, we're all smart people. We can follow along, right? 
So, right, a bastion key, four out of six. Oh, hold on, there's another thing here. Everyone loves wizards. Oh. Sorry, is this one of the misplaced artifacts? Do I manually deliver the misplaced artifacts? Or is this... Hold on. Maybe this is for this mysterious energy up here. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think it's probably for this. So let's drop it. A shimmer of mysterious energy hovers over an empty slot in this bookcase. The books on either side of the empty space are eternal ver verities unabridged and excellent spells for novices. I think I need to find the book that belongs in this slot. So E, right? Eternal verities, excellent spells for novices. So that's E-T, E-X... What comes between T and X? V. Slide the book into the slot. Ooh, and there's a whole hidden room. With our final key. That still means we... Oh, there you go. And there's the last misplaced artifact. Perfect. I was going to say that. It still means we're missing a thing. And look at that. With that, another half an hour has passed. All in the same story instance. One, two... Why is my laser beam in such a weird spot again? Ta-da! And, you know, as a fan of the lore, and as someone who's wanted to go to the Wizard's Tower for Christ knows how long, I could not have asked for a more awesome intro to it, you know? Like, you get a bit of fight, Never obviously. Listen to me. If you keep pushing, they will shove you. Interesting, actually, in retrospect. Um, so the question on my mind is, is Paytha good or bad? But here, Paytha is, like, imploring and trying to help Epoch. In such a way that Epoch leaves us alone, don't get me wrong. So it's kind of beneficial to both groups, what she's saying. But to whom does her allegiance truly lie? And I like that there. There are still worms in the dirt beneath their feet. And the demons aren't even in a rush, even though all these incursions and shit are going on pretty pretty significantly, too. They say they're not in a rush. Okay, there we go. We got that one first time. We're going to go retrieve the other one now, which was essentially in the same place. A little bit of a walk, but not too, nothing too crazy. We can go through this way, can't we? I think the inside of the tower is just labyrinthine enough as well, you know. It's just... Oh, do I go left? Do I go right? But it's not annoying, you know. You think that E's gonna end up as Ella McKay? I don't know. I don't. Something about Ella McKay feels too young, too naive, or something. I don't know. Maybe it fits. And I'd like more prevalence for season one characters. Apparently, there's a reference to the Crichton family locket in this expansion as well. I haven't seen that yet. Speaking of season, uh, well, season two stuff there. There we go, return to the Hall of Confluence and use the Astral Translocator when I'm ready. And I am ready, we've done everything. So we are gonna find Amatas now, their true home. Good work, Commander. This place I with all these bastions. I appreciate your efficiency. See? <sighs> with the Astral Translocator back up and running, we're ready to move. I don't know what awaits us among the bastions, but we must move forward, Maban or no. With a Wayfinder on our side, it'll be a fun fight. Who's the Wayfinder? <laughs> you. You have proven loyal enough for now. I'm honored. You barely know me. 
And you've still time to disappoint us. Dagda. Let us finish our preparations. We will retake the Bastions and push for the Spire. So Amatas has the World Spire in it, this crazy device thing that Isgaran's tampering with a lot. Um, and it also has these Bastions in it, like the Bastions of the Penitent. And there's one for each, strength, knowledge, so on, so on, so on, so on. Can I speak to you now that all's said and done? No? What about you? No? Okay, exit to the Wizard's Tower! And this is it! We're at the Wizard's Tower! I would have loved on first... You know when you first load into Lion's Arch, it gives you a cutscene, like a fly-through cutscene of Lion's Arch? I would have loved that for the Wizard's Tower as well, but particularly, I want the camera to be outside of the tower and, like, flying up to it. Just to really give me a sense of, okay, you are in here. Because once you're in, it's kind of hard to, you know, figure out. Check these out. Right, look, look at these constructs. You see, this one's called a construct of Goldra. These are... I cannot tell you how crazy this is, right? At the end of Season 3, in the Lazarus instance, when you go into the Abaddon Temple, all right? You've heard me ranting about this if you've seen me doing it on any of my content, right? When you go into Abaddon's Reliquary... There are these creatures in there, They're these weird golems, and they are only there in that one room in the entire game. And it's like, okay, I guess maybe this is forgotten stuff that, you know, because it's all Abaddon's secret artifacts and shit. Maybe that's why we don't see it anywhere else in the game. Where are they from? What are they related to? Fast forward to Secrets of the Obscure, Asset Reuse, what can they do? What can they pull out? I've all, every time I've come into this room, I've said they should reuse these somewhere. They're really cool enemies. Why don't they reuse the, these? Why don't they reuse these? And they reuse them in Secrets of the Obscure, but in a way that's like, for 99% of players, these are essentially new to them. But also it makes sense, you know? Like, I guess Mabon was manufacturing these? I don't know. Maybe there's some lore about it. But I was so happy when I got here. I was like, holy fuck, they're using these! These things from the reliquary. Oh, and there's a bunch of them around. Okay, so everything we just did is, is, is available again and then some more. I think we can now, we can actually find Livia here now and ask her all about the Scepter of Ore. And she'll give us like some info, not fully, but a good amount. You know, there's races. I've never done this race. Basically, my experience of the expansion from now on is, is much more pockmarked. You know, I, I have some experience of the second map. I have some experience of stuff here. But yeah, I want to I wanna explore the Wizard's Tower. We'll do more of the story. There's collections and things, obviously, as well. That'll be for the next part. My throat is actually a little bit sore. So there you go, guys. A bit of a longer episode here today. Let's say that this one being four hours makes up for the fact that one of those ones in there, you know, where we were lagging a bit, that was under the, uh, you know, way below par. So there you go. It's averaged out now. Anyway, there you go. That's day six. The Secrets of the Obscure. It's been a really fun one. If you guys had a call... I've missed a lot of messages in the live chat today. If you said something that you really want me to see, please feel free to drop it as a, a, a comment. Or come to the Discord and at me about it. And I would love to read and see what you guys think. Um, you can be a bit more no holds barred with spoilers as well when it's off the video. Uh, for, everyone, I'll see, for everyone else, I'll see you next time. If you're watching in Playlist View, I'll see you in a second for the next part. Uh, and anyone who watches live again as well, if you're looking for more Guild Wars content, check out Boots' video. It's not too long, it's like eight minutes. It's set here in the Wizard's Tower, an adventure that I'll be going to very soon. And it's got a cool thing for Boots in there, which you guys might want to see. So yeah, there you go, guys. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoy. And I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.